Gamers, if you've been searching for some build ideas for your survival world, then look no further. This video is a compilation of my first 10 episodes of the 30 plus build project series, which ends up being well over 300 builds in total in this video. I'll also just quickly mention that all of these builds are available to download over on my Patreon, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. Now, starting off at episode 1, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Alright, so the first build we'll be taking a look at is the Cove Dock, which for some reason people thought was called Dove Cock. I'm not really sure why. We're also not going to question the fact that the back of this build isn't finished whatsoever. All that matters is the front, okay? So yeah, this build pretty much consists of a nice kind of cove area of water, and we have a dock that actually surrounds like around half of it. And I should also mention as well that this build is actually based off of a, well, not a real image, but an actual image of like a 3D render or something like that. So feel free to use that and my build as well to create your own thing, or you can just rebuild this. It's entirely up to you. But yeah, so on the left here, we have a nice medieval themed lighthouse. And then on the right side, we of course have our dock that goes all the way around. We also have a staircase here that leads up to this nice building. And we've got a bunch of greenery around the place as well, a couple of little decorations. And yeah, I feel like this would just be a really nice build for a survival world. It's just a nice place to fish and also park up your boat whenever you need to. Now, I'm not really allowed to mention these ones on YouTube as I might get in trouble. So if you want these next four designs to make sense, then I'd recommend going to the description and clicking on the legal farms one. But you probably get what I'm hinting at. So I'm just gonna use some technical terms to describe these these ones, okay? So this first farm is a poppy farm, and you might know what poppies make, but yeah. And so yeah, this one consists of a bunch of rows of poppies with a nice kind of pathway that leads all the way to the back here as well through each different section. And then at the back, we have a bunch of nice storage blocks. We've got a really cool wheelbarrow design as well using a grindstone, a composter, and also an open spruce fence gate. We've got a couple of them sprinkled around the place. And I just, I really love the way this looks. This is like such an awesome design. Hey champ, that's really interesting. Next time, keep it to yourself. Now onto the next one behind it. This one is a coca farm, which uh, that is the first half of the word for the uh, illegal substance that this makes. Well, you've had a stroke. But yeah, so for all of these, I pretty much use reference images. So forgive me if this looks kind of weird, but you can just search what the farm looks like and understand kind of what I was going for. But yeah, they also have like a building here where they put all of the harvested stuff in here and they kind of mash it together, which is what these piles are supposed to be. And then we also have a bunch of storage blocks back here as well. For the next farm, we have like an indoor hydro hydroponic farm. If you have the picture open, you'll know what this is supposed to be. You might even be able to tell what this is, but yeah, I'm just not taking any chances, okay? We've also got a really cool kind of like design on the back here with a couple of shelves with some like supposed to be baby plants. This one hanging by a chain, which looks really cool in my opinion. We've also got this kind of like electrical box. I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this uh, hydroponic farm. For the final illegal farm, we have what is supposed to be the inside of an RV. As you can see, it's just kind of a box. But yeah, this is the uh, place in that one famous show, Breaking Bad, and uh, kind of tried to just emulate that. We've got like a desk over here, some storage over here, and then the area where the uh, substance is created. This could, of course, just be a fun little build to create in your survival world if you wanted to show your friends or something like that, and uh, yeah. Next up, we're taking a look at four different biome-specific bridges. So you have one for pretty much any different biome that you're going to live in. The first one that we're taking a look at is the forest biome bridge. As you can see, this one consists of a lot of oak leaves around the place. We've got them in the walls and also in the roof. And yeah, this bridge is really easily extendable. So if you have a shorter or longer area, all you really have to do is just pretty much take this chunk of the bridge here and then just keep extending it or shrinking it as much as you need. And yeah, just walking through this, it really feels like you're in like a fantasy kind of land. I don't know. It just, I really love the way that the roof of this bridge looks with all the leaves. It just looks so lush and nice walking through this. Next, taking a look at the desert biome bridge. As you can see, this one's a lot taller than the forest biome one. And of course you can make this as tall as you want. Just shrink the legs as far as you want to go. And as you can see, we've also got some nice jungle wood accents on our entire actual sandstone bridge. And I feel like the jungle wood matches the desert kind of vibe really well as it's like a kind of a washed out color. And I feel like it just suits the sandstone and desert vibe pretty well. Next onto the jungle biome bridge. And as you can see, this one's kind of like a rope or like suspension bridge. On both of the sides here, we have some kind of cool looking tiki torches on top of some jungle wood. And then that of course leads into our bridge that dips down in this river area. And we've also got some nice lush leaves under it as well. I'm not sure why this one's floating. Uh, and this one definitely really fits the jungle aesthetic in my opinion. So yeah. 
And now for the final bridge, we have the Spruce Biome Bridge. We've got three nice little archways, two of them being smaller, and then the central one big enough to get a boat underneath, which is a really nice feature as well. As you can see in the water, we actually have some moss stone blocks all around the place, which is a nice little detail that I like to add into my builds that are kind of touching the water, as if the water has been like eroding these blocks, I guess. We've also got a bunch of nice little wooden accents around the sides, and also the pathway as well is made of wood to give a nice kind of contrasting look. And we've also got some textured stone throughout this as well, not too much, as it keeps it nice and interesting looking. And yeah, so that's it for all of the biome bridges. Next up, we're taking a look at a few different entrance designs, the first one being the copper entrance. And for this one, I decided to go with a kind of vault door look. I'm not really sure how else to describe it. And now for this to actually be an entrance, all you'd have to do is make like a kind of hidden piston door thing. You can make it down here, or you can make it on the side as well, and just kind of use those two blocks to get inside. Obviously, this is meant to be more kind of like an aesthetically pleasing thing. And for it to actually function, you just have to, yeah, use the pistons, like I just said. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the copper entrance. Next up, we have the iron entrance. Again, this one is in a kind of vault door fashion. And yeah, for this one to be actually used as an entrance, similar to the first one, we're going to have to probably use some pistons in here to just remove these two blocks and like pull them back to the side or something like that. And then we've also got some nice texture around the place as well, just to keep it more interesting looking. Next, we have the natural entrance design. And this is probably the favorite out of everyone's choice from my Instagram stories. But yeah, this one's also a lot more functional compared to the other ones. We can actually just walk in here and towards the back area you can just have this lead to whatever the hell you wanted but yeah this one's also really nice and lush looking we've got some glow berries around the place to keep it nice and bright and a whole bunch of just nature stuff going on it looks really nice in my opinion and for the final entrance we have the spruce entrance very creative name i know but yeah it's pretty much meant to look like a kind of cave entrance and we've just sealed it up with a bunch of spruce trap doors and some regular doors as well of course to actually enter and yeah you could really have this lead into anything you could have it lead into a base you could even open up a few of these trap doors and have maybe some spruce fence gates under them that are open. Actually, this was supposed to be up here and then spruce fence gates like this and it looks like a nice little window as well and you could have this lead into your base. Next up, we have four different beach build designs. This first one being an actual beach and then also a pier over here as well. So we have obviously the pier itself, which is just a pretty simple design. And then for the actual beach itself, we have a nice pathway that goes through it out of just some coarse dirt and grass. We've got a bunch of big palm trees around the place as well and some bushes. We've also got this nice grass design throughout the sand. I really love the way this looks in beaches. For the next build, we actually have a shallow reef design. As you can see, it's pretty similar to the previous beach, except we've done more details into the water. We've added a bunch of coral around the place, some stones as well. And then for the actual beach itself, we've got some grass on top of the sand. You can only do this with World Edit, unfortunately, so you'll have to put grass blocks underneath it, which still doesn't look too bad. And then we've got a really dense kind of forest behind it, which really makes the beach kind of stand out and look really cool, in my opinion. And yeah, so this build is actually two in one. So this one is as well is a shallow shipwreck, which is another really cool way to kind of spruce up your beaches and make them look more interesting. And yeah, it just kind of gives your beach like a nice story to it and yeah. For the final beach idea, we have yet another pier, except this one's kind of turned into a trader. This one is heavily inspired by the game Sea of Thieves. So yeah, like I said, this one is a pier. We've also got a bunch of docking places for your boat as well, and then it comes up to a little step up over here to a trading platform. Next up, to go along with our beach ideas, we now have four pirate ideas, and the first one being a pirate cove. So this one is pretty much just a giant hollowed out mountain on the side of an ocean here, and it just kind of leads into this nice cave area. And then this all leads into a bridge back here as well, which could lead really to anything. This could lead to a mine entrance or it could lead to your base. And then to the right of the bridge as well, we have a big drop down with a nice waterfall to the right of it too. Next up, we have a pirate island. This is the first one that actually didn't make the cut. I will show you the second island that I went with, but this would be a really cool way to decorate an island that you might be living at, or maybe that is really close to your base or something like that. So we've got a nice little campsite here with a campfire going. And then we have a pathway as well that leads up here to a couple more barrels and also a little pirate flag as well. So here's the actual island that made the post. This one has a really interesting shape to it. It's kind of like a fish or something like that. I don't really know. As you can see, we have the same kind of dug up treasure design here with a shovel and we've got the same campsite and a bunch of palm trees around the place as well. Now for the final pirate themed idea, we actually have a pirate ship. Now this one is pretty much exactly the same as the one in the post, except this is the one that I actually made a tutorial for recently. So if you wanted to rebuild this for yourself nice and easily, then feel free to check out the video for this. Next up, we have a couple of mini medieval builds. So these ones are just really small 
small versions of some medieval things. The first one being a tower. And as you can see, this thing is pretty small. I don't really know what else you'd kind of use this for except for like some base defense. Or you could put this like as the design as a tower in like a kind of castle base as well. A nice little touch is you could actually add a flag to this as well. For the next one, we actually have a bonus mini medieval design. One that didn't make the post. And this one is meant to be kind of like a storage area. So we've got a bunch of andesite stone and gravel textured path around the place. And obviously a bunch of barrels and chests and just extra decorations on top and around all of this. Next up, we have our mini medieval bridge. And this one just consists of a single arch. Obviously, it's not meant to be used to cover a pretty big area of water, just like a little mini stream like this one. And yeah, we obviously have our pathways that lead to and from it as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the mini medieval bridge. Next up, we have a little bit of a cart design. This one obviously being underneath a roof. So this is kind of where you'd park your cart. But yeah, this one is pretty easy to build. All it is is just a couple of slabs. Then we've got some spruce trapdoors at the front, an oak trapdoor on the side in the middle, and then some oak signs beside that. And this kind of looks like a wheel, I guess. For the last mini medieval build, we have just a tiny little house. This is obviously not meant to be lived in. It's mainly meant to be aesthetic. You could even use this as a starter house if you really wanted to. So taking a look around the outside, we actually have a kind of nice little stone trim roof. And then we can head on inside to the interior. As you can see, it's pretty simple. We can't really fit too much in here. So we've got a couple of barrels, a bed, and a crafting table. Next up, we have a Tory gate design that's been put in a forest with a nice pathway. So as you can see, for the Tory gate itself, it is a pretty simple build. All it consists of is some stripped acacia wood that leads up into this similar design as the house that we just looked at. It's got some lanterns hanging from that. And then we've also got some prismarine blocks up here. And yeah, so along the path, we've got these nice kind of stone designs and a whole bunch of candles as well, which really gives it like a peaceful kind of vibe. So for these final four designs, I'm going to be taking you through a couple of simple wall designs that I've created. Now, obviously this isn't very big itself, but it's meant to be just repeated, obviously to like enclose a big area, maybe for a village or anything like that, maybe like a castle or kingdom. So this first one pretty much consists of some stone brick pillars. And then beside that, we've got a nice archway design using some spruce blocks. Something as well that you could do is actually extend these azaleas to cover up the entire area. I feel like that would actually look a lot nicer than the current wall. And something else you could do as well is actually replace this block here with a spruce fence. So you have a nice little window too. For the next simple wall, we have our nether wall. And this one consists of a bunch of deep slate tiles in this kind of configuration to give a more kind of castle or kingdom vibe to it. And also some of the stripped blue wood nether blocks at the back and also some fence gates as well, the blue wood. I don't really know how to pronounce it, so I'm not going to try, but I'm just going to keep calling it blue wood. For the next simple wall, we have our desert themed wall. And this one consists of a bunch of sandstone, obviously. And on the inside, we have stripped jungle wood with some signs at the tops and bottom. And on the left and right side, we have like these kind of little tower designs, which might look a little bit weird being repeated too often. So you could, of course, just have these in some like kind of integral areas to your walls, like maybe on the corners or in where the gate is. And then just repeat this wall design across most of the area. You could also shrink this down if this is too high for you as well. I feel like I probably made this one block too high. And now for the final simple wall, we actually have like a Japanese kind of themed wall. For this one, I was lazy and I didn't complete it, but you pretty much just repeat this front half on the back as well. And yeah, so this one just consists of some nice spruce wood pillars. Then we have some smooth quartz blocks on the central areas with a couple of windows. And then in front of these, we also have some tables with some spruce pot plants as well. And of course, this one would obviously look really nice in like kind of a Japanese themed village or something like that. All right, so starting off, we're taking a look at another four farms of uh, questionable legality. You might be able to tell what uh, these are supposed to be. They're all like for the same kind of crop that you can uh, grow. Well, I mean, it's legal in some countries, but uh, not where I'm from. So yeah, this first one is the hydroponic farm. As you can see, we're kind of like indoors in this nice white room. We've got a whole bunch of white lights around the place as well. But yeah, on the left side, we have like a whole bunch of crops with water in between them using some backward stairs to hold the water in. And then on the right side, we have like some kind of sectioned off areas. And then we also have some shelves as well with little pot plants and then some like of the uh, crop in the center as well. We've got some of the bigger version over here. And then just a couple of cool details around the place like these barrels and composters and stuff. And uh, yeah, that's it for the hydroponic farm. Next up, we have the field variant of uh, the farm thing. And as you can see with this one, we obviously have a nice fenced off area with a whole bunch of trees around it. Uh, just don't worry about all this weird crap everywhere. This is my building platform. But yeah, for this one, we have a pathway that just leads through all of the separate little fields here. And at the ends of all of these, we have some composters with barrels and we also got this neat wheelbarrow design as well. And yeah, something that makes this look really good as well is that we have like kind of a combination of smaller and larger crops and they're also below some coarse dirt and rooted dirt as well, which kind of helps them stand out against like the grass and stuff. On to the next one, we have the uh, backyard farm version. <laughs> this was if uh, someone was uh, trying to grow the crop in their backyard and this is just my rendition of how it would look. As you can see, we have like kind of a backyard fence design with some lanterns on top, a whole bunch of trees 
trees behind it as well. And like, uh, yeah, obviously it stops on these sides because I'm a lazy prick. But yeah, the whole idea is that like, this is kind of the image here because this was posted on Instagram. You're not really going to see the rest of the build. But yeah, we've also got like a raised up platform here with like kind of a, I don't know, like a specialized crop they wanted to keep separated. We've got a barrel and a composter as well. And yeah, now I literally spent like an entire day trying to figure out the fourth farm variant for this particular subject. And uh, I just went with like, if it was growing naturally on the side of a cliff, I know it's kind of a cop out. I just could not think of anything else for the life of me. So uh, yeah, this is it. It's just a whole bunch of the crop growing on the side of the cliff, like I just said. And we've got like a decorated cliff side here with a bunch of stairs, slabs, and some rooted dirt in some places as well. All right, and now it's onto some different farming methods. The first one being the hydroponic one, similar to the first farm, except this one is uh, a bit more legal and it's a bit more upgraded as well. It looks a lot better in my opinion, as we have like these interesting fluorescent light designs with some like levers pointing in towards each other with some end rods in between those. And then these are all like kind of suspended onto the walls and stuff using some chains. These are also supposed to be suspended from the ceiling, but I, as you know, am a lazy prick. And because it wasn't seen in the picture, I just left it out. But yeah, on the left side here, we have like some kind of big fields with some water in the center. Same with this side on over here. And we've got like wheat on this side and carrots on this side. And then on the right side, we have like some tables with some nice pot plants in them. And then we also have some more pot plants at the back here on some shelves with some barrels and composters around the place as well. I definitely feel like this would just be like a really cool build. If you have friends and stuff, they might think it looks pretty cool. All right, next up, it's onto the field farming method. And uh, this one is just pretty simple. It's simply two separate fields in one fenced off area. We've got a nice pathway down the center, a couple of composters around the place and some villages as well, just to keep it looking interesting. Obviously this wouldn't be like a fully automatic farm. You'd have to set that up and stuff, which I have no idea how to do, but I probably should figure it out as that would make a good tutorial video. Next up, it's onto the indoor farming method. And this one is just ripped straight from my ultimate underground base. But uh, taking a look on this side of the house here, as you can see, we just have brewing over there. So yeah, we've got two separated crop fields on either side. And then in between those, we got some barrels and some chests and also some composters and more barrels as well, kind of in the stairs for these farms. Now onto the last farming method, we simply have a greenhouse. And this one is made entirely out of spruce and glass. So it is pretty easy to make. We've just got this trim design here that goes from like slabs to planks to slabs and stairs. I've used this in a lot of my tutorials. And then instead of just placing like more slabs and stairs in between them, we've got some nice glass blocks. We've also got a whole bunch of glass on the windows as well, just to keep it nice and bright inside here. And heading inside, we just have the entire floor pretty much taken up by crops. If you wanted this to be a little more practical, I would turn these two crops here into some pathway blocks. And then that way you actually have like a walkway in here without worrying about stepping on the crops. And then yeah, in the center here, we have a nice table made of a composter, a couple of strips, roost blocks, and some nice more decorations on them. All right, and now it's on to some nether portal designs. Please ignore all of the crap in the background. This is my build platform. But this first one, we have kind of like a Stargate futuristic portal. As you can see, it's made up of like these two rings. We've got an outer ring that actually holds the nether portal. As you can see, the nether portal obviously can't be uh, circular, so it has to be square. So we've covered it up by using a big outer circle and then an inner circle to kind of keep it more circular. I think I said circle like 60 times then. <laughs> I'm sorry. And then yeah, on this outer ring, we also have some lights as well and some buttons as decoration. And then we have a nice little pathway as well that leads up straight into the portal. Onto the next one, we have like kind of a weird custom tree. It's like as if it was like a giant tree stump. Well, originally was a tree that was cut down and it kind of has like these offshoots growing off of the stump. That's kind of the look I was going for. I'm definitely not just making up stuff because this looks really weird. <laughs> but yeah, this one, as you can see, we've kind of like added in a nether portal into the center of it. And yeah, if you live like in a really dense forest or something like this, uh, this would definitely be a really nice build to add to your area. Onto the next portal, we have like kind of a shrine, I guess. As if like maybe you found this in like a, a forest or something, it's abandoned and like some people, they made a nether portal and then they worshipped it by putting like candles around the place. And yeah, that's kind of my reasoning behind this one, I guess. I have made a whole bunch of nether portals in the past. And uh, as you can tell, I'm probably running out of ideas at this point. But uh, yeah, onto the next one, we have kind of like a medieval wooden themed one where we've got like kind of the central area that obviously leads into the nether portal and then we have like these two cool towers on either side you can't actually access these towers in any way so i'd recommend if you wanted to actually use these towers on the sides or on the back as well you could actually put in some ladders along here that actually led up to the top all right next up we have four biome specific bridges the first one obviously being the flower forest biome so firstly taking a look at the exterior of this first bridge we have a very intricate design as you can see we've got some nice archways we've got a bunch of leaves down the bottom as well with uh, some signs kind of covering them up to make them look a little bit more like controlled, which then also lead down to like kind of the area where you can actually sail through. And then back up at the top here, we have like a neat little garden on the top with a whole bunch of flowers, 
to obviously match the flower biome around it. All right, for this next one, we have the snowy biome bridge. And as you can see, this one is still pretty detailed compared to the last one, but not as crazy. So starting down the bottom, we obviously have once again, an area that you can actually sail through, which is pretty cool. And then that leads up to like the main bridge area where we have some archways and then like a different design in the center here. And then as we lead up to the top in the roof, we just have like a simple kind of slab roof design. And yeah, I feel like this one definitely really fits the biome that it's made for, a snowy biome, of course. You could also just make this in like a regular spruce biome and it would still look good as well. I mean, you could probably make this in any biome, let's be real. For the next one, we have the dark oak biome bridge. And this one is pretty simple compared to all the other ones. It's like a simple archway bridge with some stone in the center. And then we have dark oak, like kind of trim on the sides as like the hand railing area, I guess. So down below, we've got my signature design as how we've like kind of changed into some mossy stone bricks in the water. And then we just have regular stone and stone bricks at the top. For this one, we also decided to make like a little custom kind of beach sandy area and also some cool like reeds and stuff. This is a really cool design, by the way. It's just some green stained glass panes. And then we've got sea pickles on the... Oh. That's a green candle. <laughs> then we've got green candles on the top and also some sea pickles on the other ones as well. And it just kind of looks like some reeds, I guess. But make sure if you are building these, don't put them close together like we have. We've used welded it to keep them separated. Good song, by the way. But uh, yeah, if you don't do that, then uh, your things will look like this and it looks kind of weird. So just make sure you keep them separated by at least like diagonally or like, yeah, see, I've just messed all these up. God, look what you guys made me do, man. All right, and for the last biome bridge, we have the Mesa biome bridge. This one is meant to be more like a suspension kind of bridge. It does actually look kind of weird, but it might look more normal from this angle here. So as you can see, we have like kind of a suspension bridge in the center and then that's like supported with like this weird kind of arches on the sides. I don't know how this bridge would work in real life. I mean, I'm not like a freaking engineer or something. Oh yeah, something as well is you might want to remove these pressure plates if you're actually building this. We just added it in because it makes the arch look a little bit more smoother, but uh, obviously uh, you don't just want to get stopped as you're like walking along the bridge. Next up, like the bridges, we have some biome specific mine entrances. This one is uh, a recreation because I accidentally built over my last one. So this one's meant to be the tiger biome. I'll probably show a picture right here. As you can see, the original looked a lot better. But yeah, this one's pretty simple. It's literally just like a circular kind of rock formation that leads into a mine. We've just got some random decorations. But something to note as well, we've got these interesting pillars made up of trapdoors kind of facing in towards each other to give like kind of like a half slab pillar look, I guess. And we've got that on either side as well. Next up, we have the dark oak biome mine entrance. And this one is pretty simple. We've just got like a really thin thick looking tree right here and uh it's hollowed out and leads down into like a mine that's pretty much it for the next one we have the desert biome mine entrance as you can probably tell so for this one we've got like an interesting two little towers on either side with some jungle stripped jungle wood on the inside and that jungle wood trim is repeated over here in the center as well and we've got like a bunch of accents like some buttons as well up here and yeah this all just leads into like a simple mine entrance design uh yeah for the last one we have the jungle mine and i'm pretty sure i built this one using reference i don't I don't remember where it is or what it is so uh please forgive me for that yeah this one's like a giant mound of dirt where it's well obviously this one's meant to be like overgrown or ruined kind of looking where like this is like the original kind of structure that was meant to be around here and it's been broken up by dirt and turned into moss and stuff and then heading on the inside we've just got a bunch of grass and grass everywhere and the mining track as well that's meant to kind of lead in but it's as if this has been abandoned and we've got this kind of like thing stopping us from going in and down into the mine all right next up we have some cave designs the first one being a pirate themed cave and this has to be probably one of my most favorite builds mainly because of the theme it being like a pirate themed cave and because of the reference images I used to build this which look amazing they are some of my most favorite reference images that I've built off of I think I've used them for two separate builds now the first one being in the first part of this video series but enough of that let's actually take a look at the build so firstly we have like some water obviously the uh, right side of this build isn't done but this water is meant to obviously just lead out into the ocean and then in here we've got like a cool hole in the wall here with some shrubbery growing around it and this light is meant to be kind of what helped this palm tree grow in here and like all of this grass and stuff everywhere beside the tree here we've got like a nice little campsite with some chairs and barrels and then this also leads up to a nice platform up here which is uh, i don't know what this is meant to be but it just exists okay for this next one we have kind of a dungeon cave this is obviously meant to be like kind of in like a custom dungeon or something and this is a room you would open up into it's like a big open room you see the cobwebs and the spawners and you know what's about to go down we've got a nice little bridge here in the 
the center that leads over a small little like pond thing and then obviously these doors as well would uh, just unlock once you've defeated the room I guess. For the next cave we have an overgrown cave. This was made before the lush caves were a thing so this is I guess my take on a lush cave. Probably not as great looking but yeah here it is. <laughs> For this last one we have the mine shaft and please forgive me this build might be used in the next video as well so I'll just quickly touch on it here. But yeah this one's really cool it's got like a whole bunch of intertwining uh, like mine shaft rail things that are suspended on these pillars and around the place we've got these little hiding places with like just some storage and random crap around the place as well we've got some water down the bottom we've got some shrubbery at the top i mean it's got it all man for the next build we have a ravine themed kind of little starter base this is meant to be built at kind of like the end of a ravine or in this case like a giant cave opening and so we've got a little platform of grass here where we're growing some simple crops and also some water that kind of drips down the sides which keeps the crops nice and uh, ag aggregated i don't know what the word is but yeah heading through the base we've pretty much got everything we need for a starter base we've got some chests on the side we've got crafting over here a little bunk bed design some decorations with an anvil and then our smelting and a little bit extra storage as well for the next one we have an overgrown ravine design so yeah this one is pretty much just a ravine with a giant makeover we've added a whole bunch of leaves and shrubbery and grass around the place and these leaves drip down into the actual ravine itself which we have also filled up with water we've redecorated all of the sides i mean this is basically just an entirely custom ravine at this point but yeah we've added slabs and stairs everywhere i remember this took ages to do but i think the payoff was worth it as this build looks absolutely amazing in my opinion and uh yeah it's just a cool idea if you're bored and you have a nice ravine that you want to decorate all right and for the last ravine themed build we have a ravine mine entrance yeah this one isn't quite as uh, crazy as the last ravine one but yeah it's also not finished because you guys know i'm not repeating it yeah obviously this one's themed around just obviously a mine entrance right here which leads out over over a bridge which would lead into like another entrance or something I guess and then over here we also have a pathway that leads down below the bridge we've got some leaves in the way that's uh annoying but yeah heading down the pathway as you can see we have like this kind of moss trail that leads us over here to a couple of smelters and just some other decorative stuff around the place and over here as well we have a ladder that leads up back up to like the mine entrance and then we've also added some more decorations down here as well with some glow berries and some dripstones everywhere and this build is a really cool idea for a ravine for your survival world obviously if you can't think of what to do for a mine entrance, then just do this. It looks cool, man. All right, and for these four final builds, we have some gate designs. This first one here being, obviously, the natural gate design. This one simply consists of a dirt and moss archway that kind of leads over this pathway. And underneath, we've decorated it with some of these blocks, uh, spore blossoms. I don't think I've ever used these since they first got added to the game. I honestly completely forgot these existed. Uh, we've also decorated it with some hanging leaves, rooted dirt, and also some dripstone. And yeah, that's the first gate. For the next gate, would be, I mean, really nice for like a ruined town entrance or something like that. So as you can see, what would be towers on either side are now just simply ruins of what they used to be, kind of like me. And then in the center here, we have like the actual gate entrance thing. As you can see, this is where like kind of the drawbridge stuff would be. I don't know, that's probably not the right word for it. Like the, the gate, whatever. And I really love adding like a little story to all of my ruined builds, as you might be able to see over there as well. You can't really see it, but we might get to it in another video. I really like adding these little camps into these ruined builds as it makes it look like people have just like kind of moved in here and are living near this structure I guess. For the next gate we have the desert gate and here you can see exactly what I was talking about over there that's what I meant this like kind of gate thing that will be like lowered and raised I guess. I, I can't remember what it's called I'm sorry. Yeah on the left sides we have these pretty detailed tower designs on the left one as well we've got this nice red flag and yeah I didn't really add a way to actually get up these so you, I'm sure you can figure out a way to add a ladder in uh, if you actually wanted to get to the top of these. In the center here we've got this nice gate design with a really cool looking archway and yeah. All right, now for the final build of the video, we have the, uh, I don't know what it's called. I just checked in the original post, I called it the medieval gate, so there you go. Now, this one definitely has too much spruce wood in my opinion. I would probably change these central spruce blocks to be stripped spruce, or maybe even stone accents, or yeah, something. There's just too much wood. But as you can see, we have these pretty detailed tower designs on the sides. I think I actually did add a way to get up into these ones. Yes, on the back, we've got some doors that lead into some ladders up here. So these towers are actually usable. <laughs> and then, yeah, in the center, we have a pretty similar archway design to this one over here except this time we're using some fences and then some trapdoors below them which look pretty cool in my opinion okay so for the first four builds we'll be taking a look at are some irl farms basically meaning just farms that exist in real life that don't really exist in minecraft and that's just kind of my take on it i guess so this first one being chocolate as you can see they kind of grow on these little trees that look like this well somewhat look like this in real life and as you guys might know chocolate comes from cocoa beans so we've got them all around the place as well and then from the reference picture i use they had these kind of like squares in the ground 
around with like some dirt and they had like cocoa beans on top of them. I don't know if they like crushed them up or whatever, but uh, yeah, we've also got a nice dirt path that runs around. We've got this cool wheelbarrow design that you'll probably see in a few of these farm builds. And we've also got some decorations around the place as well. For the next IRL farm, we have coffee. And this one is uh, directly behind the chocolate farm. Don't worry about that. But yeah, for this one, we've used sweet berry bushes as a substitute for the actual coffee plant, because obviously that's not in Minecraft. And I've kind of set it up to be in this like field. I don't really know how to explain it, but we've got like these kind of rows of all of them that follow up the side of this hill here. We've got a whole bunch of coarse and rooted dirt around the place and then a nice dirt path in between those as well. We've got a whole bunch of decorations like the wheelbarrow design that was in the previous one as well. We've got some logs around the place, some barrels and just some other random stuff as well. For the next IRL farm, we have the fish farms. Uh, there's obviously meant to be fish in these in every single square, but I'm just a lazy bastard. So I just went and added some in this square. But yeah, in real life, this is kind of how fish farms are generally laid out. Well, according to the reference I used anyway, they're just kind of in these separated areas that are kind of netted off between them. And yeah, it's just kind of a cool way to set up a fish farm if you wanted to make one of those in survival. And yeah, for the final IRL farm, we have the vineyard. And this one was made quite a while ago and with a couple of other builders. So I believe it was Ritz builds and also Sticky Gangster that helped with this building over here. Also, I think Extra helped with this as well. And this was made probably, yeah, about two years ago. And then we added in this vineyard probably about a year ago at this point. This was made by myself, my wife, and also Extra builds. And yeah, so we've pretty much got this giant field. They're all kind of separated by some nice dirt paths that go between them. And we've alternated between different leaves between all of them to give a different look like as if they're different wine berries or whatever. But yeah, for the design for all of these, we just have a simple two high fence on either side with a spruce fence gate in the middle. We've got a sweet berry bush underneath and then just some random leaves on top of those. For the next build, we have the Overgrown Tunnel or Overgrown Railway, however you want to look at it. And yeah, this was built using a reference picture from Reddit, which I absolutely loved. As soon as I saw that picture, I knew I wanted to make it in Minecraft. So here it is. And this would definitely be a really cool idea for a railway in your survival world. It doesn't really matter if it runs through a jungle or not, as long as you just have this kind of open section that's been dug out. We've got walls on the left and right side with these big support pillars that go between them. And then down below, we have our railway that obviously one would be going this way, the other one would be coming back towards us. And yeah, because it's in the jungle, we've added in a whole bunch of leaves and vines around the place. We've added some cracked stone bricks, regular stone bricks, mossy stone bricks, and also mossy cobblestone into the walls. And we've added some azalea and grass and stuff around the place in the bottom as well. We've also got this really cool design that I love with a little waterfall that comes down and then it kind of trickles through this little crack in the ground using some stone slabs and stone stairs. Actually, I'm pretty sure they're all stone stairs, but yeah. For the next build, we have the Mine Railway. Now, I know it kind of sucks this build. It just kind of stops here and here. When I'm building for Instagram, I'm obviously just building them as efficiently as I can. Obviously, the sides of this aren't really going to be seen. It's just kind of this view. I did not mean to leave. If I turn my FOV down, you can see this is kind of the view that it was and that's all you can see. So that's why a lot of the builds showcased in these build ideas are kind of just like that. They're just lazily kind of cut off at the ends or whatever. But yeah, so for this one, we've got a whole bunch of railways down below. We've also got one up here that's supported on these pillars. We've got some that are sticking out from the rock and then also that are sticking out from the ground. And so one of these railways leads into a little cave in here. Another one leads over this way and then we have one above as well. So something cool for survival is you could maybe make this top one like a transport railway. And then the bottom ones you could use for separate mine entrances or something like that. And we've also just added a bunch of details around the place with some grass in some patches over here. We've added some little stones on the ground for some extra details. We've also added some stone stairs for like some cracks in the ground and a site and also some ores around the place as well. Next up, we have an escape pod that I made actually pretty recently. I just randomly had the idea to do this and something as well that is really awesome is the shader pack that I'm using. It enables like this kind of reflection on the sides and stuff. I've added in these lights down here and up here as well to kind of just emphasize the reflections a little bit more. And you can see we have this kind of 3D texture as well on the iron blocks and it just looks really awesome. To get these reflections, all you need is complementary shaders and you just have to turn on integrated PBR. I will eventually be making a video about my shaders and all of the settings that I have. So be sure to subscribe for that. But yeah, back to the escape pod, which have this really cool design. We've got like this circular pattern in here. We've got the window that leads out to the, what would be space. I've just got it set to daytime for the sake of visibility. We've got this really cool pipe design using some lightning rods that go into a copper block here. This was a uh, regular copper block, one of these ones. It has since oxidized, so it's supposed to look like that. And yeah, those pipes lead over this way and then back down here. We've got like a computer terminal here and another one up here as well. Next up, we have a couple of simple gate designs. Simple meaning that they're very easy to build and replicate. So yeah, for this first one, we have like kind of a medieval themed gate and you could use this to kind of wall off a village or a kingdom or anything you wanted like that. And this would obviously be the entrance part. And you could just simply repeat this pattern here, obviously not with a big gap 
gap in the middle, you just fill all this in and you could repeat that to the left and to the right of this for the walls. And yeah, we've also added some nice polished andesite texture, just a little bit of a light sprinkle around the place. Couple of lanterns as well with this nice design up here. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the medieval gate. For the next one, we have like a kind of wooden village themed gate. I don't really know what else to call this. We've got a nice kind of doorway instead of just a blank open kind of area as well. So it's a little bit more secure. We've got a pretty cool design over here on the left with some slabs and some azaleas down the bottom. We've also got some pot plants as well. And yeah, we've also got a walkway along here so that you can walk along. That block is supposed to be there. So yeah, you can walk along up here and defend your village from any mobs or anything like that. For the next gate, we have the ruined one. And so this one is pretty similar to the medieval one over there, except this time it is obviously ruined. We've got leaves around the place as if it's kind of been taking over the structure. We've got mossy cobblestone and mossy stone bricks as well integrated into it. Now, I wanted to keep the main archway here as well so that I could add some leaves up here and so I could actually like dangle them down. It looks really cool. We've also got a neat little campsite in here as if someone has kind of moved into this structure and using it as like a little bit of a base area. For the final gate, we have the nature gate. I know this one isn't really much of a gate. It can't really keep anyone out. Well, I mean, same with the ruined one over there, but it is still a gate regardless. So yeah, this one's just a simple archway made out of a little bit of stone in here. We've also got some grass and dirt above that, obviously. And we've also got some grass, like actual grass pieces above that as well. And then as we walk through, as you can see, we've got some nice stone slabs and stairs to kind of keep under here looking nice and interesting. We've got some dripstone and some glowberries to keep it nice and bright as well. For the next build, we have the medieval path. And this one I know is pretty simple, but it is just a neat, simple design that you can add into your survival world if you need a pathway that leads to and from somewhere. So for this path, all we have is a pretty simple two wide path and it's just textured with stone, stone bricks and andesite. We've also kept the path nice and interesting by adding some buttons around the place that act as little stones. We've also got some bigger kind of stones around the place as well using some andesite blocks and also slabs and stairs as well, just to add a bit of variety to the stone design. And then as we come to this area here, we kind of have like a resting area. We've got a campsite over here. We've got a wagon as well. And then over to the left, we've got some storage blocks and just some more random decorations. Next up, we have a little campsite design. And this is actually a pretty cool starter base idea as well. If you love living aesthetically and not as efficiently as possible, then uh, this is definitely a really cool starter base idea. So as you can see, we have a pretty decorated campfire here with a cauldron above it that you'd obviously use to cook in. We've got some nice seats around the place as well. We've got a log pile, an ore pile, and also a storage pile over here. Then we've got a couple of little tents around the place as well. We've got a bed in here, some storage and crafting and smelting. We've got pretty much the same thing over here as well. Then back here, we have a nice horse stable section and we've also got a cart design over here as well that's under a little roof. Next up, we're taking a look at four different ruined builds. The first one being a ruined tower. And this would pretty much just be a cool build to add into like your area, maybe your surrounding biome that you live in. If you want to have like a little bit of a landmark or something. And if you wanted it to be a more visible landmark, you could of course put a hay bale underneath this campsite in here and that way your smoke will go up a lot higher. But yeah, so for this ruined tower, we pretty much just have like the remnants of a tower left here. We've got some stairs around the place to kind of add in a little extra detail. We've also added some leaves in. We've got them up here as well with some vines hanging down. We've also got this nice campsite in here as if some people have moved in and are like living out of the tower here. Next up, we have a bit of a ruined mine entrance. This one, not as extremely ruined as the tower. But as you can see, we have like the obviously remnants of a mine entrance here. They've kind of like collapsed and you can see some of the fallen logs here from above. We've got like a whole bunch of leaves and grass that have kind of taken over the interior as well, which give a really nice vibe to the place. And of course, if you wanted your railway to actually be usable, you can of course just link these back up and have them used. It will still look nice and fine. Next up, we have a ruined bridge design. This one is pretty simple and easy to build. We've got these pillars that are separated by three blocks and we've got some slabs above here with some fences and fence gates above that. We've got some leaves and vines that have kind of taken over the place as well. And we've got a big separation in the bridge too, which is something cool as well. We've only got an actual gap of one block. So this bridge is still perfectly usable. You just have to do a little jump between them. And yeah, that's it for the ruined bridge. And for the final ruined design, we have a ruined keep. And so this one would also be a pretty cool landmark, or even if you actually built the pristine version of this keep, which is right over here, and maybe you use this as a bit of a starter base or something like that, and you wanted to upgrade, something cool you could do is to just destroy it if you wanted to, and just kind of leave a skeleton of what your base once was, and you could come back and visit it later on and just kind of look at it, I guess. <laughs> Next up, we have a simple bridge design. So this one is pretty easily recreated. All we've got is some pillars here that are separated by some fences and fence gates. Up here on the roof, we've got a simple slab design that transitions into some stairs up here and then back to a slab at the top, which gives a nice arch to it. And then the actual base of the bridge here is simply some extinguished campfires. We've also transitioned to those so it isn't so much of a harsh step using some trap doors here. And yeah, this also branches out to a little bit of a fishing platform or a kind of docking platform. If you wanted to 
use it for that. For the next build, we have a bee sanctuary, and this one is pretty cool. It might be a little bit hard to recreate as we have this kind of sphere shape created with a whole bunch of glass, and then we have a nice wood trim that runs between those with an entrance on each side as well. So let's just head on through and take a look at the interior now. And in here, we have a pathway that of course leads between all of the different entrances. At the back left section, we have a bit of a custom tree that's kind of grown against the glass and has spread up here. We've also got three separated little beehives around the place. These are on top of some scaffolding blocks to make it look like a bit of a support stand. Also, I don't know what's going on with these flowers here. They should be like that. And we've also got this neat little mini roof design above these as well that would kind of protect them from the rain. Although I don't know why I added this in as it's protected by the glass anyway. But uh, yeah, that pretty much does it for the bee sanctuary. Next up, we have a couple of waterfall designs of increasing size. The first one obviously being the smallest here. We just have a simple little waterfall that's on a bit of a rock and that just leads out to a little pool. For the next one, we have a pretty big jump in size and also detail as well. We've got a bunch more stairs and slabs around the place to give a more smoothened look to the rock. And then that all pours out into this pond once again. We've added some stairs in there to give a bit of a nicer look so it isn't just so harsh of an angle. And also we've added a little lily pad in here as well. The next one is once again, of course, a little bit larger than the previous. And we've also got this nice staged waterfall design as well. So it first starts up here, then it comes down to a bit of a platform here, which then runs down into our now larger pond. This one's a little bit more decorated as well. We've got a lantern on top of a wall in here. We've got some seagrass, a little bit of texture going on, and also some more lily pads and leaves around the place as well. We've also added in sugar canes too. And then for the final waterfall, we've got pretty much everything we could add into a waterfall. We've got the stage design that runs down here, kind of stops along here and then falls back down once again into our pond, where we've got pretty much every decorative block I could think of adding to a pond. We've got little stones, bigger stones, lily pads, seagrass, and just everything around the place. And also something cool about this one is on the side here, we've added a little bit of a cave entrance. Obviously it doesn't really lead to a cave. It's just kind of an entrance into like underneath the actual waterfall. And yeah, this would also actually make for a pretty cool mine entrance design as well, or even an entrance for a base if you wanted. You could just hollow this out a little bit more and just add in some stuff in here, or you could mine it down into a mine entrance. Next up, we have a couple of simple wall designs. The first one here being a medieval wall. So for this one, we have a simple kind of pillar design that is repeated spaced apart by one block. And in between those, we've got an azalea, which has some rooted dirt below it, and also some stripped spruce blocks behind that. And yeah, this entire wall is pretty much just this section right here. It's just this two wide area that's been repeated just constantly. And that's what makes this pretty easy to build. Next up, we have a bit of a nether themed wall in that we're using some polished deep slate blocks. We've got some stone behind that that has some stone brick texture as well. And then in between those, instead of adding like azalea or grass or something, we actually have some warped blocks. We've got twisting vines, warped roots. We've got warped fungus as well. And that's all on top of some warped nylium at the bottom. Next up, we have a bit of a palisade wall design. This one is a pretty cool design to add around a village as it's pretty easy to make and it looks really cool as well. So we've simply got some stripped jungle wood and that's kind of alternating between the back and then the front. And it's also alternating in heights. So we've gone from low and then up high, then kind of in between those and then back low, back high. And yeah, you just kind of want to alternate between those. And also down below, kind of like a supporting area down here, we've got some stairs and trap doors. For the final simple wall, we have another kind of medieval themed one, but this one is more of like a castle medieval theme in that we have these towers on the sides. And then in between those, we have the actual wall design. This one's pretty similar to the other one, except instead of having stone on the outside and wood on the inside, we've got wood on the outside and then stone on the inside. And yeah, this one's just a bit more of a bigger and more established version of the previous one over there. All right, and now onto the final four builds. We have four houses of the ages, the first one being the Stone Age base. Now this one would obviously only really suit a starter base as it is pretty small in here. All we could really fit in is a bed, a furnace, crafting table, a couple of chests, and a couple of barrels in the roof as well. And yeah, for this one, I've kind of replicated what would be a Stone Age house. We've got hay on the roof, it's made of stone. And also on the outside, we have this kind of primitive looking wheelbarrow design. And then over here, we have a little bit of a campsite on the outside as well. Onto the next stage, we have the medieval age. This one's a bit of an upgrade to the actual house design and the size. We've also got a bit more stuff on the outside. We've got a dock over here. We've got a little bit of a crop farm, an upgrade in our wheelbarrow design as well. And then we can head on inside and I can show you the bottom floor. Down here, we've got our crafting, a little bit of storage and also some furnaces. We've got more crafting blocks over here. And then up to the second floor, we have our bedroom, a little bit more storage and some barrels and chests over here. And then over on this side, we have just some more crafting blocks and also a lectern as well. For the next stage, we have the modern 
age house. And I'm pretty sure this was actually the first ever modern themed house that I had ever made. So my apologies if it looks a little bit bland compared to some other ones that you might have seen. It's not exactly my style, but I just wanted to give it a go. So for this one on the outside here, we have a bit of a flower field going on. We've also got a pathway here that of course leads up to the entrance. Heading inside, we've got a kitchen design down here. We've got our staircase over here and our main storage area as well. Heading up the stairs, we have like a hallway that leads into our bedroom where we have a nice lamp design, some more personal storage. And then turning right from the bedroom out here, we have a bit of a barbecue design and also our balcony as well. And now for the final age, we have the futuristic age. I'm sure there's a better name for it, but that's just what I thought of at the time. And yeah, so for this one, as you can see, we have a base that's actually partially submerged, well, mostly submerged in the water. Up above it, we have our crop farm with a couple of bits sticking out for you to park your boats up to. Over at the back here, we have our elevator down. So the big green sign is obviously the entrance. The red sign is the exit. So we can head down into the entrance where we've got a bit of water down here to cushion our fall. Then we can head out into the actual base. And as you can see, it is pretty small, but we've managed to fit in a whole bunch of stuff. We've got a lot of furnaces up here. We've got some smokers and also blast furnaces down here as well. Towards the center front of the base, we have some little planters over here. We've got some flowers on this one, and then we've also got some more green plants on this one. We've got our bed in between those. And then on this side, we have our main storage wall with a whole bunch of barrels, chests, and also our crafting as well. And then in the center of the base, we've got a little island with some chests and barrels. So this first one is a pretty cool design. We've got like these... So Okay, the squares, let's be honest. So we got these two squares. We got like a lower one and then we got a higher one. We also have a staircase and a pathway that kind of connects them up as well. We've got a couple of composters on each of those as well. And then down here, we also have a little bit of a storage area too. Next up, we have just a more traditional farming method, which is of course, just a couple of fields. So in here, we've got this intricate kind of fence design around the place. You might actually want to uh, change these lanterns to be slabs instead. I don't really know why I did this. And maybe just add the lanterns on top of the fences as more mobs can just quite easily jump over this. See, so yeah, I'm not sure why I did that, but yeah, just make sure to fix that up if you end up building this for yourself. But yeah, something that makes this look really cool is that we have like kind of a, obviously a fenced off area. And then inside here, we have multiple individual fields. These are also all broken up by some coarse dirt pathways, which look really cool. And at the end of all of these pathways, we have some composters as well. And they also have their own little lids too. So you can close them and open them and have them looking pretty cool. For the last farm design, well, not the last for the video, but the last for these first three, we have the hydroponic one. I've made quite a few hydroponic farms and uh, this one has probably got to be one of my favorites. I really love this light design here. We have these hanging chains and then we have some levers here that point in towards these end rods, which look like some fluorescent lights. Then at the back here, we have like a couple of shelves as well with more lights above those. And then we also have these kind of individual tables with a whole bunch of azaleas. And we've also got a bunch of flowers around the place as well. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of blacksmith designs. The first one being just a simple standard blacksmith. All the next ones are a bit more interesting than this. Yeah, this one is definitely a really cool way to spruce up maybe a blacksmith that you have in a village that you're upgrading or if you just wanted to make a blacksmith for yourself then this is a really cool interior design for that. So at the back left here we have like our forge design and this lava spreads all the way out here into a cauldron as well. We've also got a water cauldron for you to kind of theoretically cool off your created items up here. We've also got an armor stand at the back with a couple of armor pieces on them and just a whole bunch more decorations around the place as well. We've got barrels and then also these are invisible item frames with items obviously inside them. There's a resource pack that you can get to make item frames invisible, which is uh, pretty cool. For the next blacksmith, we have a dwarven blacksmith. And this one is actually heavily inspired by old school RuneScape, which is one of my all time favorite games. As you can obviously hear, you can hear the old school RuneScape music playing right now and in a lot of my videos too. But yeah, yeah, so for this one on the back here, we have a whole bunch of shelves with just some neat decorations. In front of those, we have more decorations. Then at the back here, we kind of have like a mega like furnace smelting thing. We've got like a ladder to get up top here to put your items in. And then at the front here, we've got like these pipes that kind of connect up to over to these blast furnaces and then over here to like this handle. I don't really know what all this is supposed to be. I kind of just used the images from old school RuneScape as a reference. And uh, this is what I could come up with, I guess. Onto the next blacksmith design, we have one that's kind of in a cave. And this one's meant to be kind of like an evil theme. And this one's actually based off of Dark Souls 3. I really love that game as well as Old School RuneScape. So I just wanted to kind of add that into this one as well. So at the back here, we have like a giant lava pool and that's feeding into these blast furnaces, theoretically. In front of it, we've got a single anvil. And then also around the place, we've got a whole bunch of details. We've got some chains hanging around the place. We've got some roots and also these supporting pillars as well. And now I couldn't really think of a final blacksmith design. So I just added in a kind of ruined one. This one's as if it's obviously been kind of in the middle of a war or something like that. 
that, and it's just been torn to shreds. And yeah, as you can see, we just have like obviously remnants of a blacksmith inside of here. And something actually really cool about this is we have like this kind of water pool over here, and that's as if it's been leaking out into the floorboards. And we've done that by using some stairs around the place to kind of snake the water around, which is really cool. Next up, we have a couple of starter base designs. The first one here being the glass variant. So out the front here, we have a nice pathway made of some coarse dirt and some dirt path. We've also got a couple of crop fields as well. And then at the front here, it's kind of like as if this has been built into the side of a cave or the side of a cliff or something like that. We've decorated the front by adding this kind of overhang with some grass and it's also being supported by some stone stairs and slabs. At the front of this, we've also got some brooded dirt. We've got some glow berries and also some dripstone for some extra detail. Heading on inside, on the left here, we have our main storage area followed by our bedroom. To the right of this, we have our smelting section and then finally our crafting area over here. For the second starter base, we have the wooden variant and this one is pretty similar to the previous one in that we have some crop fields out the front and we've also got a pathway that leads up to our entrance. Heading on inside, I was a little bit lazy with this one. So there's nothing on the back wall, but on the left side, we have our crafting and some storage. And then on the right side, we have our smelting and some extra storage as well. Next up, we have a couple of mini indoor farm designs. This first one being a hydroponic kind of design, similar to the ones I've showcased previously. We've got pretty much the same design here with some polished andesite, levers pointing in towards some end rods with some crops below. For the next one, we have a square kind of design. We've got a lantern that's hanging down and that's lighting up these crops surrounding it in kind of like a donut or square shape. For the next one, we actually have a automatic cactus farm. Obviously this one is pretty small. We've only got two cactuses here, but over a long period of time of just being AFK, you will of course accumulate quite a lot of cactuses and this doesn't take up too much space as well. And for the final mini interior farm, we have a tiered design. This one is pretty cool. We've got some water that starts up top here and that actually flows down and powers these crops. Well, I say powers, it's not really powering, is it? And now, uh, yeah, that's flowing down to the bottom one as well. We've got some more crops down here too. Next up, we have a couple of water features. The first one here being a water fountain. Now this one is a pretty cool and intricate design. We've got like this kind of circular shape around it to contain all of the water. Then in the center, we have this like big spike kind of design with some parts sticking out. The water up here is inside of a stone wall and that's kind of flowing around these stairs, which is like parting the water around all of these areas and flowing down. And yeah, looks pretty cool. For the next water feature, we have kind of like a modern design. I don't really know what else to call this, but the water obviously starts up here. It trickles down on both sides and down into the bottom. We've also got some sea lanterns in here as well, just to light up the water and make it look a little bit more modern, I guess. The next water feature is a little bit cooler than all of the other ones in that it's actually powering a whole bunch of crops. So on the sides here, we've got a couple of steps up so that we can actually like jump up to the crops and not destroy them in the process. And then as you can see, we have water here that flows into each one and that's coming up from this main water column up here. And yeah, just like a pretty cool little design for a crop farm. And for the final water feature, we just have a bit of a decorated pond. This is just a really neat design to add to your world. If you're living in like a swamp or something like that, or you just have a pond near you that you want to decorate. As you can see, we've just added some coarse dirt, rooted dirt and moss around the place in the water as well. We've added some seagrass, some slabs and stairs as well as stones. And then some lily pads, sugar canes, azaleas around the place and a big stone at the back here with a lantern on top, which is really cool. Next up, we have a couple of nether portal designs. This first one being the futuristic design. So for this one, we've got like a black outer ring around the nether portal inside. As you can see, it is a square and we've got this ring around it to kind of make it look more circular. And then we've also added a ring on the front as well with some sea lanterns and some buttons on top of those. And then we also have a nice staircase that leads up into it as well. For the next portal, we have the island portal. And this one is of course pretty simple. It's on a little mini island out here. We've also decorated it by adding in some custom palm trees and those are kind of like draping over the nether portal as well. For the next nether portal, we have probably one of my favorite ones that I've ever made. And this one is the overgrown one. It needs a bit of a trim. I haven't been here in a while, so uh, forgive me. But yeah, this one's really cool. It's like in the side of like a cave or something like that. We've decorated the whole area with a whole bunch of mossy blocks, vines, glow berries, dripstones, rooted dirt, and just everything around the place. And then of course, at the back, we have our massive nether portal. You kind of want to build this in a way so that the obsidian is hidden and not really seen from the outside and it gives this really cool look. Something as well that really makes this look awesome is that we have these holes in the walls as well where you can see the portal through and I just really like the way that looks. And for the final nether portal design, we have the ruined nether portal. Now, obviously the portal itself isn't ruined, but the structure that would have been containing it has been ruined. And it kind of also tells like this really cool story about it. Like the nether portal is like some kind of otherworldly thing that can't be destroyed, but the structure around it that was holding it can be destroyed and has been over time. So yeah, we've got like these kind of four support pillars on the sides that have just corroded. We've got like a bunch of decoration blocks around the place as well and some lanterns. And we've also added some vines on top of the actual portal here as well. For the next build, we have an upgraded mineshaft bridge design. 
when. And I made this when the 1.18 update first came out, and this is kind of like my idea if they actually updated the mineshaft bridges and made them look a lot cooler. So yeah, for this bridge, obviously the vanilla bridges are simply just some planks that kind of go across and like have a little bit of support pillars, but I've actually added in a whole bunch of extra details around the place. I've added in these fences and fence gate designs. We've got some lanterns on top of those as well, and then we have these big pillars that go down to the actual bottom of the cave. And in here we've got a bit of a pond with a waterfall that's actually leading into that as well. We've added some glowberries underneath the bridge as well and also a whole bunch around the place. This is meant to be like a lush biome. But I actually custom made this whole area myself because I couldn't be asked to update to 1.18 when I first made this. And in the same vein as the last build, we actually have what would be my idea for an update to the mine shafts in vanilla Minecraft. So obviously vanilla mine shafts don't have an entrance down to them and this would just be my idea to add in like a mine entrance. Imagine how cool it would be just kind of stumbling across one of these in the side of like a cliff or a mountain and then just knowing that it leads down to a mine shaft. It would be a pretty cool thing to stumble across and obviously we can just head down. As you guys know, I'm pretty lazy so this doesn't go down really far. This is obviously meant to go down like a lot further. But down here is also my take on what the mine shafts could look like. On the inside, as you can see, we've added a whole bunch of decorations around the place. We've also changed up how the pillars look as well. We've added signs around them as like kind of support and also some fences and fence gates in between those. The minecart rails around the place as well are kind of like snaked around to give a bit more interesting look to them. We've also added some cracks in the ground as well using some stairs. And this leads down to what kind of would be the end of the mine shaft where we've got some ores and also some candles around the place as well. And then heading back here, as you can see, we actually have like a little crafting station set up in here as well, which would be a pretty cool thing to come across. It would be pretty useful as well. For the next build idea, we have my ultimate fishing dock. So this is the biggest and best fishing dock that I've made so far on my channel. Be sure to leave a comment if you want to see another fishing dock. I've made quite a few at this point, so I don't blame you if you don't want to see another one. But this one's pretty cool. We obviously have the main dock here that leads over this way where you can fish from. Then over here, we also have our docking area for our boat. We've got a bunch of aesthetic details around the place. We've got like a little crane design. We've got a boat underneath here and some barrels and chests tucked away underneath here as well. And then over here, we obviously have our kind of main building area. Over here would be like kind of the shop front. Then we can head inside and take a look at the interior. We've got some crafting blocks and storage blocks around the place. We've got some smokers for smoking your fish. And then we can head upstairs up the ladder into where we have our bedroom and some storage blocks as well. And then out onto our balcony where we've got a little bit more storage and just a pretty cool view as well. Next up, we have our Subnautica style base. And this is probably one of my favorite underwater bases I've ever made as it looks really cool. So firstly, taking a look around the exterior, as you can see, we have these pipes that kind of lead down and just kind of head deeper into the ocean. I've obviously stopped it here because I'm a lazy bastard. On the outside as well, we've also got this nice light design. We've got a couple of details on the outside as well with like these kind of vault door entrance things. I don't really know what they're supposed to do, but they just kind of look cool. Then taking a look on the inside of the base, as you can see, this room is kind of like our storage and crafting area. We've also got a whole bunch of hallways that kind of lead between all of the rooms. Yes, most of them are empty because I am lazy. And then that also leads over to this room here, which is like kind of our indoor farm section. If you want to see this base fully fleshed out and made into a tutorial video, be sure to let me know in the comments. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of aesthetic starter farms. So these builds, unlike most of the others, are actually pretty useful for your survival world. And this first one being the fully automatic sugarcane farm. And I will just quickly say all of these starter farm designs have their own tutorial video, so be sure to check that out as well. So yeah, I won't really go too much into how this one is made, but it is pretty simple and easy to build. It's just the bog standard sugarcane farm. We've got our minecart with a hopper underneath that, kind of just bouncing back and forth, and that all leads into this chest as well. The main cool thing about this is that it's actually in like a really nice looking shell. Instead of just being this exposed weird looking farm, it's kind of like this cohesive building. For the next aesthetic farm, we have the cactus farm. Now, similar to the previous one, this one has a really cool house that it's actually made into. I really love the roof design on this. It's probably one of my favorites. And yeah, on the inside, we of course just have a pretty standard cactus farm. These cactuses grow into the side of these fences, which makes it pop off and down into the water and into our chest down below. And now for the final aesthetic starter farm, we have the gold slash XP farm. And this one is actually a very, very useful design for the early game. And I'll show you exactly how it works right now. So we can head on inside through one of the doors at the back here, close the door behind us and head up the ladder. Now up here, we just need to grab a bow and arrow and then just snipe any of these zombie piglins around the place. Uh... Okay, so yeah, now we can snipe one of these. We can head back down real quick and I can show you how this works. So all of these piglins think that these open trap doors are solid blocks and they all just fall on down like the dumb idiots they are. Look at all of them. Yeah, so we've got a whole bunch here, as you can see. All you have to do now is just head down, grab out a sword that I don't have and you just punch them. This is where you can collect your XP as well. And then underneath this, we have a whole bunch of hoppers that would collect all of their items as well. For the next build, we have the crop fields. And this one is a very, very simple build to make and it looks really cool as well. 
wall. So we simply just have these giant squares of crops around the place where we've got some dirt path in between all of those. We've also added a bunch of fence posts and some lights on top of those around the place and some grass as well. Now, as you can see, I haven't really added too many to this area and uh, you can of course just expand this as large as you want. And also be sure to break them up by using different crops between them and also add in some maybe different farms as well, like this tree farm. You could also add in melons and pumpkin farms as well. And back here, you could also add in a little house design too. Now this build is pretty old, so yeah, this house looks pretty shit. So obviously you can do a lot better than this, like what the hell is going on over here, man? Holy crap. Get me away from that, what the hell? But yeah, this would be a really cool way to lay out your farms for your survival world. Next up, we have a villager torture chamber. Now, I don't really know why you'd want to build this, but I uh, just thought I'd add it in because a lot of people liked this for some reason. But yeah, so over on the left side here, we have our villagers that have bad trades that we've locked up and they're kind of in these suspended cages that are hanging from the roof. Down here, we have my favorite torture method, which uh, I guess you can probably imagine what this does and how it feels. Over here, we have the stretching rack. As you can see, this is the thing that you'd turn to like stretch them out. Then on this pole right here, we have our various torture tools. We've also got some water buckets over here for some waterboarding and stuff like that. We've also got some more torture tools over here. We've got a drain down here as well to drain away any uh, fluids that might come out of our victims. And then over on the right side here, we have like a hanging rack thing and also some villagers that are actually hanging from some chains as well. And now for the final build, we have these floating gardens. And this is actually based on an ancient farming method, which is really cool. They used to build up these artificial islands in the middle of lakes and dams and stuff like that. And then they'd put their crops on top of those. So this is kind of my take on it in Minecraft. As you can see, we've kind of got the islands in the center here. And then these are all supported by these logs and stuff around the place. We've also got a nice water channel in between all of these so that our farmers can sail in between them. And then we've also added some extra decorations with some leaves on top of fences as well. All right, the first four builds we'll be taking a look at are some levels from the back rooms. And the first level here being level zero, I'm sure you're all probably pretty familiar with at this point as it's been made pretty popular over YouTube in the recent months. But yeah, to build this, we've used complementary shaders. I've turned down the minimum light setting down to two so that all of the darker areas are really dark. And I've also used a backrooms texture pack that you can find, I think it was on Planet Minecraft. Onto the next level, the pool rooms level, which is also level 37, according to the backrooms wiki. And yeah, I really love the idea behind this level where it's just like pools that you have to kind of trek through and it's just like, yeah, I, I don't know. It just gives like such a weird vibe. There's so many awesome pictures and stuff out there of like creepy pool areas and yeah. Yeah. I tried to emulate an existing picture that has a spiraling staircase that goes up into some light and we also have a couple of dark tunnels in the background as well. Next on to level 48 of the back rooms which is the sewer system. And now this one as well is just based off some reference images in that we have like kind of these sewer opening things and then this one over here has been broken out like some kind of entity has been kind of captured in here and has since broken out. And yeah I just tried to make like the creepiest looking sewer system I can. We've got some sea lanterns above and also some water that flows through all of these and then also also down into this little area over here as well. And something really cool as well with the water in the original picture, I used my shader pack to change the water into like a brownie kind of color, which makes this look a little bit more dirty and creepy, I guess. Now into the final backrooms level thing that I created. This one is the infinite train on level 49. And yeah, it's pretty simple. All it is is just a really long train that I made. It, it's not infinite as uh, yeah, it just ends over here. I just made this simple design where we've got some signs above. We've got a randomized set of like chairs. They can either be one wide or three wide and we've got windows behind some of them as well and yeah that's pretty much it for all of the backrooms levels next up we're taking a look at a bunch of different phobias that i've recreated in minecraft the first one here being xylophobia which surprisingly isn't the fear of xylophones but is the fear of forests so we've got a bunch of cool different forests for this one the first one being just a simple spooky forest that i created a while ago and yeah all it consists of is a nice steep slate pathway in the middle that is fenced off on either side and we also have a bunch of custom spruce trees around the place as well with some candles around the place and also a whole bunch of soul lanterns too. For the next forest, we have a bamboo forest. And this one's actually not very creepy at all, but it does look pretty cool. So similar to the last one, we have a pathway that runs down the middle. We've got a little canal in there as well, just to make it look a little bit more zen. And then it leads up to a staircase over there that leads to a black wall. But yeah, on the sides, we also have a bit of a fence. It goes between some spruce fences and then spruce leaves as well. And then obviously beyond that, we have a whole bunch of bamboo on either side. We've textured the floor using some podzel, grass, and coarse dirt. And 
if you're wondering how all these bamboos are really bushy looking, all we did was simply use the debug stick and simply set it to the leaves option and just kept right clicking until we got the leaves that we want. And then we just did that to pretty much every single one around the place. And yeah, that's how you get a nice custom looking bamboo forest. Now this next forest is again, one that isn't really meant to be creepy at all, but does become pretty creepy when it's set to the right time. I probably could set it a bit later, but then it wouldn't be very easy to see. But yeah, this is a custom forest that I made for a build a very long time ago where I made this kind of cabin in the woods. There is a time-lapse video for this on my channel if you really want to see it. But yeah, for this, I made a whole bunch of custom trees and pasted them around the place. And yeah, once it's set to the right time, it does become pretty creepy looking. Right, and for the final forest, we have one that is actually made to be spooky. And this was made also quite a long time ago for my spooky forest update idea. Now you can find the whole trailer for that on my channel as well. It is pretty spooky, so be warned. But yeah, we end up going into this house and something interesting happens. And yeah, again, for this one, I made a whole bunch of custom trees and pasted them around the place using World Edit. And yeah, this was just my idea for like a spooky kind of biome that could be added to Minecraft. Looking back at it now, it's a little bit weird. I don't think they would ever add something like this, but uh, yeah. Just before we continue on to the next builds, this video is once again sponsored by Generations SMP. If you're looking for a Minecraft server that doesn't reset and can't be corrupted by shady staff, consider subscribing to the Generations SMP Minecraft server for the low price of $5 a month. They do this to keep the hardware running and to keep the griefers and annoying players out of the server. I'm also hosting a build competition on the server with a the theme based design, and I'll be joining on November the 5th at approximately 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to judge your builds. So be sure to get in there and make an awesome base design. Links are in the description. All right, back to the video. Next up, we're taking a look at the fear called sub mechanophobia, which is the fear of partially or fully submerged man-made objects. And this first one is a flood shaft. This one was built using a reference. And yeah, all it consists of is a giant cylinder here. I've only decorated the front of it because this post was for Instagram. You're only gonna see the front, so why build the rest? That's also just my reasoning for being really lazy. But yeah, for this one, we have like, yeah, like I said, the cylinder, and then we have a walkway that would go around the whole thing. And that also leads to a staircase that goes down. And the whole reason this one fits the fear is that this object here, the staircase, well, should go further down into the water, but I ended it here. And we also turned the water pretty opaque and brown as well. So it looks like this goes further down into the water when it actually doesn't. But yeah, that's it for the first one. For the next sub mechanophobia build, we have the oil rig. And yeah, this one is pretty creepy once it's set to like the right conditions. I can't really turn my render distance down for it to work, but you can probably see the original picture right here and how creepy I made it look. There's not really supposed to be much of a background or anything behind it and like you'd kind of just be swimming in the ocean I guess and you'd stumble across this right in front of you and it might look pretty creepy. For the next sub mechanophobia we're actually on land surprisingly and this one is simply just a subway that is submerged underwater. It's been flooded all the way up to pretty much the top of the pathway here. The area around it has been corroding from the water where we've added some mossy blocks and stuff around the place and yeah. And for the last sub mechanophobia build we have this. I don't know what it's supposed to be but it's supposed to be like a ladder down into the abyss with a platform below with some stuff growing on it if we jump in you can probably see it a bit better and yeah that's all this one really is next up i'm gonna rapid fire a whole bunch of the next phobia which is the lassophobia the fear of deep bodies of water i've made eight builds of these in total and the first one here being a ledge in the original picture it looks a lot creepier where i kind of masked off the edge of this in photoshop and made it look a lot darker down below and yeah that's all that pretty much is to the first build onto the next one we have simply a shipwreck that's all this one really is. I pretty much just took a boat that I already made and then I rotated it using world edit and then that obviously messed it all up a little bit so I went back and fixed it all, added some extra details in and some seagrass and kelp in the place and yeah. For the next one we have a giant hole in the ocean. This one goes down pretty far and like all the other ones I made this look a lot creepier in photoshop. I will just quickly say I have made a video on phobias in minecraft which includes all of these and I also showcase how I made them look creepier in photoshop so be sure to check that video out if you want. The next one was me on a little mini boat. Actually I think it was this one here. Yeah, it was this one. It was just a picture of me standing on the boat with the ocean below and the picture was kind of cut in half so that the water was halfway through. And yeah, I'll probably be showing a picture of it anyway so you'll know exactly what I mean. On to the next one. This one is inspired by the game Iron Lung as with a couple of the next ones as well. So this one is pretty much just obviously bones of a giant monster. Something interesting is for the skull here, we use some dripstone for the teeth and then we also have a bunch of rib cages back here as well. And yeah, that's it for this one. For the next one, we have a creepy fish face. This one went through a couple of iterations. As you can see over here, we had one where I had a whole bunch of teeth in it. Spoiler alert, this is the face that comes up in one of the pictures that you take in the game. And I just thought the face looked really creepy and I wanted to make it in Minecraft. The next one, once again, is inspired by Iron Lung. And it's uh, kind of the interior of the submarine that you actually drive around in the game. To decorate this, we've used copper blocks. I've also used a whole bunch of lightning rods around the place as kind of pipes. And then we have like a couple of buttons and levers around the place 
place and this is meant to be like a computer terminal and yeah. And now for the final thalassophobia build, we have another ledge. This one is built using reference. It's a pretty popular picture of like a guy sitting right on the edge of it. And yeah, it's meant to just look really creepy as if like if there was no water here, you'd just pretty much fall straight off of the edge into the abyss below. And yeah, that's pretty much it for all of the thalassophobia builds. All right, on to the next fear, which is kinophobia, the fear of voids and empty spaces. The first one being a giant back rooms kind of level once again. It's simply just a giant room. We've got a whole bunch of lights in the ceiling and then that leads over to a big opening here, which is kind of just into nothingness. For the next kinophobia build, you might notice that I'm zoomed in and it's because it's gonna break the illusion if I don't zoom out, but this one is basically like a big open empty desert. I removed all of the cactuses and dead bushes and stuff around the place to make it look kind of like a big empty desert, I guess. And if I zoom out, you can see, uh, yeah, there's uh, trees and stuff right next to it. <laughs> for the next one, we have a giant hallway. Um, I don't really know what else to say about this and that it's, yeah, it's just a hallway. We've got some pillars in the center. We've got a bunch of sea lanterns in the ceiling. This all leads down to a door at the end. And also we have like kind of this opening at the left. The picture was taken like this. So it's meant to look like it kind of continues going to the left. And yeah, that's really it for this one. And yeah, like the desert one, we once again have one that's going to kind of break the illusion if I zoom out. But this one's meant to be like the void, I guess. So we have this kind of ledge here where you can just simply fall off the end and into the void below. And if I zoom out, yeah, you can see it kind of breaks the illusion. Yeah. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of liminal spaces that I made. The first one being, once again, a backrooms level. I will just quickly say I made a whole video on making these liminal spaces and uh, I feel like it was a pretty cool video. It was more of like a passion project, so be sure to go check that out. But yeah, this one is simply just a little bit of a backrooms area. That's all there really is to it. The next one's a bit more interesting. This one's kind of like the pool rooms backrooms level, but it is more so just kind of like a room with a pool in it. Now, to make this look a lot creepier, we have used black concrete at the backs here to make it look like it kind of just goes out into the dark. And in my video for these builds, I actually showcase how I made this look a lot creepier using Photoshop. So once again, check the video out, okay? For the next one, we pretty much have what would be a parking lot. And we have some lights here as well to actually let you see. And yeah, it just kind of makes it look like there is a whole void of nighttime around us. When in fact, it is just a giant black concrete area. And yeah, it's just meant to make you kind of feel alone and creepy and... I don't really know how to describe it. For this last one, we have another creepy hallway. So using the PTGI SUS shaders, you can see that the lighting is actually pretty realistic and that we have like a light in this room and it shines a shadow out over here. And once again, in Photoshop, I made this look a lot creepier by adding something to that shadow. And yeah, this one's pretty simple. It's just like a school hallway, I guess. And that pretty much does it for all of the liminal space builds. Okay, and this next one is pretty much the worst nightmare I actually ever had. Yes, this is a real nightmare that I had in that I jumped down into like this underground hangar thing and then I was like, grabbing something down here. I don't exactly remember what it was. And then as I was trying to jump out on these boxes, this creepy thing came from the hallway behind me, grabbed me and like flew us out into the sky. It was like, yeah, it sounds kind of stupid, but it was literally the worst thing because it felt like I was actually like flying during the dream and I woke up like literally sweating and yeah, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. But yeah, this was the worst nightmare I had and I just wanted to recreate it in Minecraft. For the next build, we have an underwater submarine bay. This one's actually based off of the underwater labs in Rust and I just decided to recreate it in Minecraft. So we have just a pretty big room. We've got some windows that obviously lead out into the ocean itself. Back here, we have a door. To the left of that, we have a couple of computer terminals. These look kind of weird. I know, I tried my best, okay? Up here, we have a pipe design using some warped trap doors and we also have some stained glass inside that to make it look like kind of water passing through that. And then down below here, we actually have where the submarine itself is. So this is obviously the entrance to the submarine and you jump in and kind of drive away. Yeah, and yeah, that's pretty much it for the underwater submarine bay. Now, unfortunately for this last one, I completely forgot to set a warp to it so that I could actually teleport back to it. And I spent probably about an hour trying to find it for this video. So yeah, you're gonna have to forgive me as all I have is this picture right here. And what this is, is the main kind of area of the asylum from the game Outlast. Obviously this one was built using the reference picture that is shown right here. It does actually end up looking pretty creepy. And uh, yeah, I have played the main game and couldn't finish it because it was too scary for me. All right. So firstly, starting off, we have my ultimate super smelter design. And I will just quickly say this does have a full tutorial video on my channel. So be sure to check that out if you want to build this for yourself. So this super smelter is actually encased in a really cool kind of house style build. And yeah, a cool feature with this super smelter is it's actually two built into one build. So we've got the left side here, which is its own individual super smelter. And then the right side as well. As you can see, we have some chests here on the left side. This is the fuel input and then the item input. And then this is the output chest here. And we can head on inside and take a look at the interior 
interior. So on the left side here, we have both of our hoppers that go back and forth between all of the furnaces, and then all of our output hoppers underneath the furnaces here go all the way down to our chest. Next up, we're taking a look at four different unique bridge designs. The first one here being a medieval theme. And what makes this one unique is that we actually have some doors underneath here that kind of lead between each side. Now, as you can see, the backside isn't created because I am lazy. Uh, but yeah, you get the general idea. This is obviously meant to uh, go down to here, and there's meant to be a door here as well. But yeah, the whole idea behind this bridge is it's just a normal bridge up above, and then we also have the kind of pass-through things down below. And you can also sail underneath it as well with a boat. Next up, we've got the natural bridge. This one's pretty cool. It's entirely made out of dirt and grass. So we've got some moss and stone around the place as well. And we've just created like an arch over the river here. You can also, once again, sail underneath this one, and you've got a pretty cool view as well. You've got some rooted dirt, some dripstone, and also some glowberries hanging down as well. We've got some leaves, azaleas around the place, and a couple custom little mini trees as well. Next up, we've got the overgrown bridge. So this one utilizes a whole bunch of leaves to make it look kind of overgrown. Even though it's not really overgrown, it's more so meant to be like the design, I guess. But yeah, so we've got leaves on the handrails here. We've got pot plants as well, and then we've got leaves in the roof, and it just feels really nice walking through this bridge, especially with the Germs Better Leaves add-on, which I highly recommend using. It makes the leaves nice and bushy. Right now onto the last unique bridge, and this one is probably the most unique bridge I've ever made, and it's actually an underwater bridge, which is uh, a little bit impractical, but it looks cool. So as you can see, on the left and right side here, we have our entrances, and these go down, obviously, underwater. We've got a nice view out into the water as well, and then we can, of course, just head up on this side, and yeah, you can sail over it instead of under it this time, and yeah, it just looks really cool, especially for like a futuristic setting. Maybe if you change the wood to like stone or iron blocks or quartz or something like that, it would look really cool in like a kind of futuristic style as well. Next up, we've got the giant industrial crop farm. And this one is definitely just a really cool idea for having like some massive crop fields that you want to create. You don't necessarily have to have like this industrial theme to it, but it makes it look really cool. And uh, once we get closer, you can kind of see there's uh, not too many details I put into this build as it took long enough creating it. So there's not too many details in here, but over the back here, these are meant to be like some solar panels. Then we've got some silos and a couple of warehouses as well. And then of course we have our giant crop fields. Now to add some extra detail to this, I'd put like maybe some wheelbarrows around the place, maybe some tractor designs, and maybe make the warehouses look a little bit more interesting than this and not just uh, completely empty and unfinished entirely. <laughs> Next up, we have my fully automatic sugarcane farm. And similar to my super smelter design, this one's actually two, like, kind of mechanisms mirrored on either side, and it's joined into one building. So as you can see, if we head through the door, we have a minecart hopper that constantly goes back and forwards between both sides and collects all of the harvested sugarcane and deposits it into this chest here. As you can see, we've also got some bamboo in here, because I was testing, and actually does work with bamboo as well, which is pretty cool. And yeah, so similar to the super smelter design, it is basically just a basic sugarcane farm design, and it's been encased in a a pretty cool looking build. This was made quite a while ago, so it is a little bit over detailed in my opinion. Like there is way too many trap doors and signs on the back of this thing and on the sides. Like I would honestly replace these ones with some signs or even just completely omit the signs entirely. But yeah, once again, you can find the tutorial to this on my channel if you want to build it for yourself. I will just quickly note as well, we also have another design over here and this one actually uses water. It pushes the sugar canes out into the water and into the chest down here. Next up, we're taking a look at a wooden bridge. And the cool thing about this design is it actually has two variations. It has the pristine one that you're looking at here and a ruined one that we'll get to in just a second. Now, as you can see, this one is kind of just like floating in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you're gonna have to forgive me for that. The next one is in the original position that this one was supposed to be in. But yeah, so this bridge design is actually really cool. We've got a different design in every single section. As you can see on the left side here, we've got like some wider kind of windows. Then it goes to a smaller one. And then in the middle, we've just got like the arch with no windows because it couldn't really fit in there. And similar to the unique medieval bridge, we also have like this pass through here. Well, I mean, it's meant to go through once again. <laughs> Don't worry about that. All right, and here's the ruined variation of the bridge. So this one's as if it's been kind of war-torn. Uh, you might be able to see the pristine one over there. Don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, this one has like a giant gap in the center that you can actually still jump across, which means this bridge is still completely usable. It's just like kind of a design aesthetic, I guess. Yeah, so we've just added a whole bunch of more leaves around the place, a whole bunch of vines as well. Even the boat down here has been destroyed as well. And yeah, it's just two cool kind of versions of uh, the same build. Next up, we have a riverside base design. And similar to the previous one, this one actually comes in a pristine and ruined variant. And uh, if I take a step back, you might be able to notice that this build, once again, is uh, kind of not in the right spot, like the last build. Uh, just don't really worry about it. The next one's in the right spot. But yeah, so this is meant to obviously be a river here. And then we have like this nice little base with a dock. And then we also have a farm that sprawls across the right side with a pathway down the center as well. There's obviously meant to be a door here and the whole house isn't really finished because once again, I'm a lazy, absolute piece of shit. Uh, so just imagine that's an actual house. And yeah, so we've got like two separate crop fields on either side. We've got like a nice wheelbarrow design, a couple of decorations around the place, and like this little composter kind of station thing. I did not mean to destroy 
that. Whoopsie daisy. And yeah, so now let's go take a look at the ruined version. Okay, so here we are at the ruined version. So obviously the house is uh, completely destroyed here and we've got something that I really like doing in a lot of my ruined kind of builds is adding a little campsite inside of it with a campfire. Just makes it look like someone has kind of moved in here after the fact and is living out of this shell of a house. Now to get this looking ruined, we've added a whole bunch of details around the place. We've added grass and tall grass in between all of the crops and stuff, which is a really nice effect. This is probably one of my favorite ruined effects to add to like a crop field. Just sprinkling in grass and ferns around the place. It just really gives it a really cool look. And yeah, this is probably one of my favorite ruined builds that I've ever made. I just really love the crop farm and how like awesome this looks. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of smelting wall designs. These are obviously meant to be kind of inside of your base on the walls and it's like meant to be your smelting area, of course. And so we've got four designs. We've got two aesthetic ones and two efficient ones. This first one that we're looking at here is the more aesthetic one. As you can see, we've got less furnaces and we've got more room for adding in some nice aesthetics. Like we've got bookshelves back here. We've got a couple of armor stand displays, a couple of more decorations on top of here. And uh, yeah, for the second aesthetic smelting design, we've got leaves on the sides this time. Our barrels are also down below and we've got some up the top here with this cool looking design. Now onto the two more efficient designs that are still pretty aesthetically pleasing. So this one, we've got like a more vertical kind of furnace setup, I guess. We've also got our armor stand displays and a couple of barrels as well. And now onto the final design, we have the most efficient one here in that we have some hoppers. So the whole idea behind this one is that you're going to chuck your smeltable item in top of here. Then you can put your coal or whatever in top of these chests and it'll feed down into the furnaces. And then as soon as the furnaces are done, they'll get put down into these chests down here. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of modular house wall designs. So these are meant to be just kind of like simple wall designs that you can repeat around an entire base. You could make like a whole shape of a base just using these walls and then pretty much just slap a roof onto it and you're done. So the first one here is a more kind of wooden medieval style. This is a simple design that I use in a whole bunch of my bases. You'll probably notice that if you scroll through any of my videos on my channel. A lot of my bases have this simple design. Onto the next design, we have a more kind of dark medieval themed one in that we have some deep slate tiles for the background and then we have some dark oak on the front here. Onto the next one, we have a bit more of a detailed wall design and that we have some textured cobblestone and andesite at the back here. Then at the front, we have this nice archway design and we also have this nice leaf design at the bottom as well. And then even more in front of that, we have this kind of barrel design underneath these stairs, which kind of looks like a supporting pillar. And then up here, we have some arches as well. So this is like a three layer wall. It's pretty crazy. We've got a lot of stuff going on in this one. And then for the final one, we have another medieval kind of vibe. This one's more of like a stone one. It's very similar to the first wooden one over there. Instead, it's a little bit more mellow. We've got obviously more stone around the place instead of wood. We've also got some nice contained leaves back here with some signs across and also some pot plants on top of those as well. Next up, we've got some simple short wall designs. The first one here is more of like a modern kind of gate design, or it could even be medieval. It's up to you, I guess. It kind of goes both ways. But for this one, we've used some invisible item frames here with a stone half slab in there. And then we've got our torch in front of that, which is just like a kind of nice looking torch design, I guess. I don't really like using torches in my builds, but using this design makes it look a little bit more professional, I guess. For the next short wall, we have a wooden one this time. We've got three pillars similar to the other one over there. We've got some fence gates in between those and some upside down stairs with some strip spruce wood behind those. You could also add in some azaleas on top of here or even some flowers if you wanted it to be a little bit more vibrant. For the next one, we have a bit more of a dark kind of theme. We've also got our similar pillars, except for the middle one this time, we have a slab on top instead of it going like up to the same height as the other ones. And yeah, so this one uses some polished deep slate. We've also got some deep slate bricks as extra kind of details just to keep it looking a little bit more interesting. And now for the final short wall design, we have a natural kind of cliff face design. So this one's obviously not meant for like a base or something. It's meant to be more of like a cliff design or I don't really know how you'd use this one, but yeah, it's just a simple kind of design. We've got like an overhang here with some rooted dirt hanging over and that's all been supported by some stone stairs and stone slabs as well. And then on top of here, we have a custom little oak tree as well. Next up, we have some brewing area designs and similar to the smelting designs that we looked at previously, these ones are meant to obviously be inside of your base. This is just kind of like a showcase that I made. So this first one we'll be looking at is the first aesthetic one, of course. So on the right side here, we have some leaves at the top to add a little bit of greenery. Those are all contained by this trapdoor and we got some signs as well. We've also got our lantern that hangs down in the center with some brewing stands on some shelves. And then we also have a whole bunch of barrels underneath them for some storage. Then on the left wall here, we have a bit of a different design. On the bottom here, we have like a stone kind of table with a water source in the center. I like to do this instead of a cauldron because this actually never runs out and it still looks good as well. And then on the left and right side as well, we have some nether wart growing so that you don't really have to make a whole separate farm. Although if you want more than two to grow at a time, you will of course need a whole separate farm. Now onto the second aesthetic design. This one's a little bit different, of course. So on the right side wall here, we've got some little house plants on the sides. And then we also have like a suspended shelf here with some brewing stands on top of those. Then on the left wall, we have some more barrels along the 
the top for your brewing storage needs. They're all supported on this shelf here, which has a lantern that kind of brightens up the entire area. We've got, of course, more shelves here with some brewing stands and then a little bit of storage down here as well. Next onto the first efficient design, which is also still pretty aesthetically pleasing. But instead of taking up a lot of space with decorations, we've just focused more on storage and brewing and that's pretty much it. So on the right side here, we've got two shelves with a whole bunch of brewing stands. I don't think anyone would ever need this many brewing stands at once, but uh, it looks cool. And then on the left side here, we've got a whole bunch of storage and some barrels and double chests and then a couple more extra little brewing stands as well. And now onto the final brewing design. As you can see, this one is the final efficient one. On the right side wall here, we've got a bunch of chests on the top, all supported by this shelf. Then down below here, we've got another shelf with more brewing stands. And this one's pretty cool. It actually incorporates the little nether wart farm design as well. And down here, we also have our water source too. Then on the left side, we have just more of a simple wall. We have some barrels on the left and right side and then just some shelves holding up more brewing stands. All right, now for the final four builds of the video, we have a couple of nether portal designs. This first one here being the overgrown kind of cliffside nether portal. So this one obviously is kind of like a chunk taken out of a cliff. It's actually a whole custom cliff that I built myself. So as you can see, we've added like this protruding rock section here that's holding the actual portal itself. We've added a whole bunch of leaves around the place and some vines as well. We've even textured the back of the cliff here using some stone bricks and also some andesite to make it look a little bit more interesting. And then in the front here, we've got our nether portal. It's kind of like hidden away. Like we've tried to hide the sides, I guess. I mean, you can make it look a lot better, but yeah, I guess we tried to like kind of hide it a little bit as if it's actually part of the cliff and we've covered up the front of the portal using some stone slabs and stairs, which makes it look really cool. For the next nether portal, we have this grand desert themed one. So on the left and right side, we have these big towers. I don't know why they have different colored flags on each one. I mean, I'd probably just remove one of them entirely and only have one flag. We've textured these towers using some sandstone and also smooth sandstone. And then on the inside, we've used some strip spruce logs and a whole bunch of other decorating blocks around the place as well. Also, a really cool thing that I like doing with my towers to get them not looking as blocky is adding this design on the corners, which is a wall at the bottom and then some fences in between those and then another wall at the top, of course. And yeah, and then obviously, of course, in the center of these two towers here, we have this nether portal design in here. I feel like this would probably look a little bit better having a three wide or even four wide nether portal as the towers are probably a little bit too close in my opinion. But yeah, it's a pretty cool design for like a desert castle or anything like that. For the third nether portal, we have a bit more of a simple one. This time it's more of like a ruined design. This one's as if it was encased in some kind of stone structure and has since crumbled to the ground, but the nether portal inside is still obviously unharmed and is perfectly working. And to get this ruined look, we've just simply added in a whole bunch of stone bricks and andesite. We've used stairs, slabs, and walls as well to just kind of give a nice broken look to it. And now for the final nether portal, this one is very simple. It's uh, meant to be like kind of a standalone portal design that you'd maybe add into like a kingdom or something like that. It's not meant to be too crazy. It's meant to be more of a mellow kind of design, but it still looks really cool in my opinion. On the top here, we've got this weird looking little thing going on. I actually really like the way this looks. It's pretty cool. And I mean, yeah, it's just a pretty simple, cool looking design. The first four builds we'll be taking a look at are some IRL farms, which basically just means that they look cool. And the first one that we have here is the hop farm, which is a crop that's used to make beer. So as you can see, we've decorated it by using a nice little beer barrel design over here. And then we also, of course, have our main hop farm thing over here, which I know isn't really possible in vanilla Minecraft without using world edit and stuff, as we have some floating glowberries here, which is why over here I have a secondary way that you could actually create this by using some blocks above them. For the next IRL farm, we have the coffee farm. And this one actually doubles as a actual useful farm, as we have used sweet berries in place of coffee bushes. And this is also a really interesting and nice looking way to set up a sweet berry bush farm as well. For the next IRL farm, we have the tobacco farm. And as you can see, this one pretty much just consists of a whole bunch of dark oak saplings. Now you might be thinking that these are of course just going to grow eventually. And a really cool way to stop any sapling from growing is to just simply place a piece of string above it. If you're far away enough and on the right level, you can't actually see it. So uh, I mean, it works pretty well. For the final IRL farm, we actually have a vineyard of grapes and this is how wine is made. So for the actual design here, we simply just have a bunch of fences and fence gates that are connected together with a sweet berry bush below and then some leaves above. We've also of course decorated it with a whole bunch of pathways and some interesting little wheelbarrow designs as well. Now something cool you could actually do is just make a giant field of all of these like I did for the thumbnail for this video and you'll definitely have a really nice looking farm area in your survival world. Next up, we're taking a look at four custom end portal designs, starting off with the void design. We've got these nice kind of old rickety looking bridges where you could fall off, so be careful. And yeah, just like a cool, like interesting end portal design. Next up, we're taking a look at the lush end portal. And now I know this one would definitely be a lot of work as end portals obviously spawn inside of a stronghold, but I mean, you could just customize the existing room that the end portal is in and you can definitely get a really interesting 
interesting looking nether portal. I mean, end portal, sorry. And now for the third end portal is pretty much just what I explained, except it's a little bit simpler. This one's meant to be a ruined nether portal. So we've got the actual existing stronghold room. It's a little bit weird looking, so uh, don't worry about that. But it's as if it has been ruined. So we've added a big chunk taken out of the back corner here and added in a bunch of moss and dirt and grass and stuff. And then also underneath the portal, instead of having lava, we actually have water, like a nice little puddle here. And we've got like these cracks in the stone using some stone stairs. What the hell? Get away from me, buddy. And uh, yeah, we've added the water in so it kind of snakes around and it looks like it's been filling up cracks in the stone. Okay, and now for the final end portal, we have a fully custom one that's meant to look like it's inside of like a room. So we've added a nice case around the end portal out of some wood and some trapdoors as well to make it look like it's been kind of contained, I guess. But yeah, we've also got some storage blocks and some crafting blocks on the sides here as well. And yeah, just a general cool idea for an end portal. If you frequently go to the end portal, this is a nice custom room to set up for one. Next up, we're taking a look at this custom underwater cave design. And this build would definitely be a really cool idea if you found a cave that you like and you wanted to maybe add like a pathway to it and decorate it as well. So in terms of decorating, all we've done is added a whole bunch of texture to the walls with some andesite and some stone bricks as well. And we've also added in some stairs and slabs around the place to make the sides and all of the edges a little bit more interesting. Then for extra detail, we've added in dripstone, hanging roots, glow berries, these things, spore blossoms, <laughs> I can't remember what they're called. And then we of course also added in this big main pathway that uh, theoretically would continue on as far as you needed to go. Um, I ended it off here because uh, I am lazy and uh, I mean, you can only see it from here. So yeah. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of nature decorations. The first one here being a backyard design. You don't really need to add this water in. I don't actually know why I added this in. So yeah, we've got a whole bunch of separated little gardens around the place. We've got some composters and barrels in the corner. And then also in the center here, we've got like a nice little island with some big bushes as well. Now for the next nature decoration thing, we have a nice little custom pond here. So instead of using dirt around the outside like most ponds would, we've instead opted for stone and andesite. And we've also blended in the corners and stuff by using some stairs and slabs. So instead of it looking really like a jagged, if we had just had it like this, we've added in, like I said, stairs and slabs. Now for our third nature decoration, we have a little mini waterfall. And something that I really like about this one is that we have kind of a staged waterfall. So it starts up here and then it flows down to this little section and then it goes down to here and then finally down into our little mini pond as well. And now for our final nature decoration, we have a nice little custom cliff face here. So maybe if you have a base in the area or something like that, like maybe this base over here, I didn't actually even realize this was here. And maybe you wanna make your cliffs look a little bit more interesting than something like this. You can of course just go around and make a nice custom cliff design. You don't even have to add this cave section. You could just add a nice overhang here and have it being supported by some stone stairs and slabs. And then if you really wanted, you could add a little bit of an in cove and this could even continue on into a cave as well, possibly into even a mine entrance. Think about the possibilities, guys. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of custom mine shaft designs, all with their own individual theme. The first one, of course, being the medieval theme. So for the details for this one, we've got some big pillars. These have been decorated by using some regular oak wood and also stripped oak wood to make it look a little bit more weathered. And then we've added some nice stairs and trapdoors as well to make it look like it's kind of bracing the ceiling as if it is like crumbling, like in this section right here. Then for some extra detailing down below, we've got some barrels, chests, logs and candles around the place. We've got like a little nice smelting station over here. And then over here for some extra decoration, we've got like a little mini elevator as well. For the next mineshaft design, we've got a little bit more of a simple one. This one is just the lush theme. So obviously not the most practical, but if you're in love with lush nature stuff like I am, then you would love this one. And this leads into a nice little pond as well. You could add a bridge over this if you wanted to continue off into the distance, or you could turn left or right here. I mean, it's up to you. For the third mineshaft design, we have the actual room one. So this one's meant to look kind of like the medieval one, but as if it has been ruined and is pretty old. We've added a bunch of logs around the place to make it look like the like existing structures have just kind of fallen and turned into logs. We've got a little bit of a pond in here as well and added in a bit of nature blocks to make it look like nature has been taking over as well. And now for the final one, we've got pretty much the complete opposite of everything we've shown. This one's more of like an established kind of modern themed. We've got a couple of fluorescent lights in the ceiling as well. I really love using this design. We've got some levers that are pointing in towards each other with a couple of end rods. We've got tracks that kind of connect into each other here and we can swap between them by using the lever. And then over here, we've got like a bit of a sewer system that this has to travel over. We've used some slabs to go over the water and then this all leads up to a big iron door as well. We've got some copper blocks on the sides here to look like pipes. We've also got lightning rods up here to look like a pipe that's kind of continuing on throughout the entire length of the tunnel as well. Next, we're taking a look at a couple of biome specific pathways. The first one here, of course, being the forest biome. So these 
are all just little chunks taken out of a theoretical like longer pathway I guess and these are the decorations that you could add beside them to make it look a little bit more interesting. Next up onto the jungle path we've also added in some cracks in the path using some stairs and then we've decorated the outsides of the pathway using some moss carpet once again some coarse dirt grass azaleas and also some little stones and we've also added a little bit of a river beside this one as well just to add a little bit more of an interesting look to it I guess. Next up for the snow one we've instead changed the pathway once again this time to gravel and cobblestone. We've also added some little light designs using some lanterns on top of some walls here and I'm pretty sure this is melting the snow as we speak. This is meant to not melt it but I mean yeah I mean it looks fine having it melted around it. It makes it kind of look like it's keeping the pathway nice and warm for your feet. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> and now for the final biome path we have the spruce one. So for this one we've added a little bit of a campsite here. We've surrounded it by using some barrels chests and then we've got our actual campsite of course. Then over on the opposite side we've got a little bit of a sweet berry farm going. Well not really a farm it's meant to be like a natural look I guess. And then over on the other side over here we've got a little bit more decoration using a nice wheelbarrow design and a couple more barrels. Now you guys really liked the previous underwater base that I showcased in uh, one of the videos I can't remember and I've actually made another one. This one's is older than the first one but this one's also in a subnautica style as well. So we've got one build on the right here. This one's like the theoretical entrance and this would take you up to over here. As you can see it's filled with water because I am lazy. And then the back one here is meant to be like the main base design. We've got a nice indoor farm at the top here. But uh, yeah just a really cool base design overall. Next we have a tiny little village on an island. So starting off down here we've got our dock. So our dock leads up to the main platform here. We've got a nice little bench. We've got a garden as well and our staircase that leads up to the two buildings. So this would actually work really well if you're playing with a friend. And uh, yeah just a really cool aesthetic base design. Next up we have the space greenhouse. This was just a random build idea that I came up with one time. Especially with the complimentary shaders night time it looks really nice. If you want your night to look like this be sure to check out the video at the top right right here. But yeah back to the build we've got like a tunnel kind of shaped farm design and then on the walls we've got our crop farms we've got some tables as well with some pot plants and yeah and then in the middle here we've got a table with a whole bunch of different flowers and then back here we've got kind of some grass instead with some more large bushes as well. Next up we're taking a look at the medieval lighthouse build and this is definitely a really cool build to add to a beach. So maybe say you live really close to the beach or like in the forest over here and you want to just have a nice little decorative thing to look at over at the ocean you can just add this into your world. And yeah an extra detail of course to add to your lighthouse is to add some stones around the place and to make it on its own sand island as well. Next up we're taking a look at two bridge designs that are very similar. One is stone and one is wood. We'll get to the wood one in a couple of seconds. But for the stone one here we have kind of like a damn wall design. As you can see on the water on the backside here is really high and then the water is kind of trickling out through these iron bars down into the lower side over here. Now for the wood bridge I'm sorry as it's uh, kind of just floating over here. I just had to move it out of the way for this one. So yeah just imagine this is kind of in the same place as that one. But yeah so it's like the same kind of height same length as well and instead of like a dam wall we've actually just got a normal bridge. So we've got a nice archway here that you can actually sail through theoretically to like uh, I mean along the river. On the left and right side we've got a little bit of a pass through so that you can get to the other side of the bridge without having to go up and around or without having to swim through the water. And yeah overall just a really nice wooden bridge design. All right now for the final four builds we have a couple of compact room designs. The first one here of course being the indoor farm room. So obviously this is meant to be like kind of a showcase like a chunk taken out of a base but this is a nice little use of space. So on the right side here we've got of course a little bit of a crop farm. We've got the same thing on the left side but on the right side here we've got a bit of storage. This would honestly look better using some barrels all the way across. I don't really know why I added chests there but that looks a whole lot better. And then all the way in the middle of the room here we have a bit of a square farm setup thing as well. On to the next compact room design. This one is the storage one. So on the left side of course we have our mass storage area where we've got a whole bunch of double chests. And then on the right side we have a little bit more of an aesthetic storage section. We've got some barrels along the top and a couple of double chests down below. And then in the middle area here we've got a bit of a table made up of some barrels and then some spruce slabs as well. And we've got a couple of decorations on top of that too. For the third compact room we have the crafting area and this one consists of a nice brewing area as well as of course crafting blocks. And now for the final room and the final build of the entire video we have the smelting area or like the kitchen. It kind of looks like a kitchen with this floor pattern which is pretty cool. But yeah so on the left side here we have the more aesthetic side if you just want to get some smelting done. And then on the right side we have the more efficient setup over here where we have some chests with some hoppers that connect up into our furnaces. So you leave these furnaces full of coal or whatever fuel you want to use and then whenever you want to smelt something you just chuck it up in this chest up here. It'll feed through into the furnace and then down into 
the output chest down below. All right, starting off, we're taking a look at this massive stone quarry build. So if like me in your hardcore world, you need a whole bunch of stone and you want to like kind of do it aesthetically, you can make this nice build for your quarry, I guess. So starting off with the actual quarry part, we have this nice staircase that goes down in a spiral into our actual quarry, like I just said. And then up here as well, we also have a staircase that leads over to this nice crane design. We've got some storage and some smelting up here as well. Next up, we have this jungle entrance design. This is a really cool build to add to any jungle. If you have like a base inside of here or anything like that, maybe you just want to create like a nice wall that surrounds a jungle. But yeah, so for this, we just have this simple design. Uh, I mean, don't worry about this. Uh, it's incomplete. We have this simple design that's just repeated up until we meet up to the actual gate here, which is just a simple opening. And we have this nice like tiered staircase design thing as well. Next up, we have this massive medieval gatehouse design. So if you want like a really cool entrance to your village or a medieval town of sorts, or even like a medieval castle entrance, this is definitely a really nice build for that. So we've got two massive towers on the left and right side. They have these nice inset walls here with some strips, spruce logs, and these big fence window things as well. Then over in the center here, we have our actual gate section. And this also has a nice pathway that uh, I mean, I don't know where the doors went, but uh, yeah, it has a pathway that connects up the towers together as well. Next up, we have this really aesthetic overgrown tower design. This has been made in a way to look like as if it's been like reclaimed by nature. It's got like this massive spiraling spruce tree that goes throughout it and it kind of like sprouts out the sides and then up at the top as well. And I mean, not really a completely useful design, but definitely like a really cool base design or just like a nice aesthetic piece to add to your forest if you have like a base in the area or anything like that. Next up, we're taking a look at four different sizes of ships. The first one here is like a little mini rowboat thing. It's pretty simple to build. All it consists of is these stairs, slabs, and then some trapdoors as well. We've also got a little actual boat inside of there, and then this little sail thing as well. For the next size up, we've actually got somewhat of a little bit of a boat here. We've got an actual like mast with a sail on it. We've got a little bit of decorations around the place as well, and uh, yeah. For the third design, we once again, of course, have a bit of a bigger ship here. This one is actually modeled after the sloop from the game Sea of Thieves. I mean, it's not exact, but uh, it closely resembles it, I guess. And now for the final ship, the biggest one, we have the Brig or the Brigantine, which is also modeled after the Brig from the Sea of Thieves. So this time we've got two big masts, one at the uh, kind of area where you steer the ship and then one towards the center of the ship here. We've also got some like little openings that you can use to go down. And something cool is I've also made that same general ship design into a complete base design as well. So you can find the tutorial for this on my channel. As you can see, if we go down, we have like an actual base in here. We've got storage, crafting, smelting, everything that you could possibly need inside of a nice pirate ship design. Next up, we have this neat windmill design. This is a really nice design to add to any kind of village or medieval town or anything like that. So all it consists of is, of course, just this simple windmill design. But something that makes this really stand out is that we have wheat fields that pretty much just surround the entire area around it, which looks really cool. Next up, we actually have a survival island. This is a really cool video that I did quite a while ago. I did this one in a bit of a cinematic style. So, I mean, feel free to check it out if you want to. But yeah, so we've pretty much just completely redone this entire island by adding in a whole bunch of trees. We've added in some decorations around the place with some logs. We've added in a dock as well. And then as we come up to the actual area over here, we have our tent. We have a little bit of a cabin. We have a mine entrance down over here as well. And then a nice campfire with a seat and some random decorations as well. Next up, we actually have this large wooden bridge design. So if you're in love with spruce wood like I am, this build uses pretty much no stone at all. It's just entirely spruce wood. And we've got some little dark wood accents as well. But yeah, so if you need to cover a really large and high up area, this is definitely a really nice bridge design for that. And then if we come up to the actual bridge design, as you can see, we've got this nice roofed section over here. We've got a bunch of lamp posts around the place as well to keep it nice and bright and a whole bunch of decorations too. Next up, we're taking a look at this survival compound base design. This base does have a full tutorial video and tour video on my channel. So be sure to check that out if you're interested. But here, we're just going to take a very quick look at it. So around the outside, we've got these nice wall designs and some towers as well. At the back, left we have our big main tower where most of our base components are and we also have this nice roofed section for the entrance here so if we head on inside as you can see on the outside here we have a whole bunch of stuff we've got storage crafting nether portal smelting as well and then if we head over to the left tower over here we can head up to this is like our decoration kind of area then again we have our storage area and then finally in the very top room we have our bedroom next up we have this massive medieval bridge design so it's very similar to the wooden one except this time we are using wood and stone. So we've got two big arch designs, a big central pillar. Under here, we also have like a nice little hobo den, which is pretty cool. I mean, being homeless isn't cool, but uh, the design's cool. Yeah. 
you know what I mean. So on the left and right side, we have these nice roofed sections. And then of course we just have the actual like main bridge. We've got a whole bunch of nice decorations around the place to keep it looking nice and interesting. And yeah, so this is actually the pristine variant of this bridge. And we also have a ruined variant, which is this one over here. It does need a bit of a trimming. So uh, please forgive me for that. I haven't been here in quite a while, but uh, yeah, as you can see, this one's just kind of in like uh, floating in the middle of nowhere. So just don't worry about that. Just imagine it's in the same spot as the other one over there. But yeah, so this one's as if it has been like war torn. We've got like big chunks taken out of the roof section over here. This one's a little bit decayed as well. Then in between the bridges, we've got these damaged segments that like you can still use as a normal bridge. You can still just jump over these gaps. So these bridges are still perfectly usable as long as you're okay with a little bit of parkour. Next up, we have this interesting underwater greenhouse design. So as you can see, it's all encased in this nice glass dome. We've added some sea lanterns around the place to keep it nice and bright. And yeah, as we walk in, as you can see, we have this nice big table on the right side, or a couple of tables actually, where we've got a whole bunch of pot plants. And then on the left side, we have these little fields with a whole bunch of flowers and azaleas and random stuff as well. Next up, we're taking a quick look at three different aesthetic starter farms. The first one here being, of course, the sugarcane farm. So all this one is, is just the simple sugarcane farm that everyone uses. It's got the observers with pistons below and a redstone line behind all of that. But the thing that makes this interesting is that we've encased it in this nice build. So we've got like a cool roof design. We've got like walls that showcase the entire thing and also showcases the redstone behind there. And then we of course have our minecart hopper down here, which collects all of the sugarcane and drops it into this chest down here. For the next aesthetic starter farm, we have this cactus one. So once again, this is just a standard cactus farm in here, but it's all encased in this nice build. And yeah, so all these cactuses just pop off like that down into the water and then down into the chest down here as well. Now for the final aesthetic starter farm, we have this little tower in the nether, which is actually a golden XP farm. So the whole idea behind this one is that you go to the top of this tower up here, you grab out a bow and arrow and you just shoot any of these pigmen and they will all follow you down into the area down below. As you can see, I've already prepared some from earlier. And so you can just come down here, smack them, you get a whole bunch of XP and a whole bunch of gold and other items as well. Next up, we have this weird aesthetic bridge design. This is actually based off of a real bridge that exists. It's called the Devil's Bridge. And I, of course, did put my own aesthetic twist on this. I added a whole bunch of leaves and vines and stuff, and the shape is a little bit different as well. And uh, yeah, it's definitely just a really interesting and unique looking bridge that you could add to your world as it's more of like a circular arch shape instead of just like a straight across kind of thing, you know? Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of different town entrance designs. The first one here being the medieval design. So as you can see, we've got a little mini gatehouse here, kind of like a mini version of the one that I showcased previously in this video. And then to the left and right of that, we also have this neat wall design. So this is like an entire package. So you could just build this gate and then you can repeat this wall as far as you need to go to surround your entire village. And now for the second town entrance design, we have a more wooden, kind of more primitive one where we have these palisade walls on the left and right side. And then we have this nice little gate as well. Next up, we have this tiered farm design. And this build also has a full tutorial video on my channel, so be sure to check that out if you want to build this for yourself. So as we enter, as you can see, we're on the first layer here where we have a whole bunch of wheat. Something cool about this is that we have a single water source on the left and right side, and this flows down and powers pretty much all of the farms on every layer, which is pretty cool. So yeah, now we can head up the ladder at the back here up to the second floor where we have our main storage area. We can also head through this door here and also through the water out to our farms on the second floor. And then we can head up the ladder once again, all the way up to the third tier where we have our spuds. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of watchtower designs. So these have been designed for you to encase like a snow golem inside of here. And these would be used to like defend your area against creepers or mobs or whatever. So the first one here is the evil design. So we've primarily used deep slate and also warped wood over here as well for the accents. And uh, yeah, just like a really cool tower design, I guess. For the next tower, we have the medieval design. And something cool about these is you can actually just use these as regular towers as well. You don't really have to put snow golems in here. And yeah, for this one, we've also added a nice little flag design up here and then a whole bunch of decorations. We've got like some encased plants and then this nice window design as well for the golems. Or you could just replace this with like a fence and it would be a nice window design as well. Next up, we have the wooden medieval themed tower. So this one is, uh, yeah, pretty much entirely wood except for these little stone brick walls in the corners. And uh, yeah, once again, just a really cool tower design if you prefer more of a wooden theme instead of stone for your medieval stuff. And now for the final tower, we actually have a ruined one. So maybe you have a town that is like maybe half war torn or it's completely ruined or anything like that. This would definitely be a really cool tower design to add to that. And as you can see, we've also added in a little bit of a campsite in here as if people have moved in. I've explained this a couple of times now, but I really love doing that for my ruined theme builds. It just adds a little bit of extra life to them. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of different crossroads designs. The first one here being like a spruce medieval themed one. So yeah, all of these are going to have this like plus shaped of road. This is kind of like an intersection and uh, like some nice designs that you would add to it, I guess. So yeah, for this first one, we are using 
using andesite, gravel, stone bricks, and mossy stone bricks, and mossy cobblestone, and coarse dirt in the pathway. So this is a pretty uh, multicultural pathway we've got going on here. We've got a nice campsite over on the side here, a nice rock design with a lantern on top of that, and then a couple of bushes on the other sides as well. For the next crossroads, we have another medieval themed one, but this one's a little bit more simplistic compared to that one. So firstly, we've got a lamppost design on this side. We've got a nice custom tree over here, a little bit of a storage pile, and a wheelbarrow design over here, and then just a simple rock design on this side. For the next crossroads, we have a nether themed one. So this one's using primarily blackstone stuff for the road, and then we've got a nice custom little warped forest in every single corner, and then also a little bit of a lava lake over here too. And now for the final one, we have a desert themed crossroads. So over here, we have a little bit of an oasis design with a custom azalea tree, and then pretty much in every single side, we've got like a little bit of stone, some dead bushes, and some cactuses as well. For the first one, we have this fully custom beach design, and uh, don't judge me as uh, it just kind of ends right here. Uh, just don't worry about that. But yeah, so for this beach, we've kind of just expanded the length of the beach, so it's like more of a gradual decline into the ocean. We've added some extinguished campfires and little stones and stuff on the beach for some extra decorations, and also these custom palm tree designs as well. For the next build, we'll be taking a quick look at this swamp village idea. So basically, this was our idea if villages could generate in swamps and what they'd look like. So as you can see, all of the houses are pretty different looking. We also have a couple of unique generation uh, thingies here. So we have like a man-made pond for like the town center. We also have this big weeping willow tree over here as well. Uh, might need a little bit of a trim. And because there's a lot of water in swamps, we made it so that the buildings can kind of generate on these stilts in the water. So yeah, they generate on these big platforms and they could also have bridges that connect them between the main kind of village as well. Next up, we have this mountain base or cliffside base design. So firstly, we have an elevator down here that takes you up to the actual base. And taking a quick look on the inside, as you can see, we have our storage, brewing, enchanting bedroom and our furnace section over here. And then our elevator also takes us up to the roof where we have a little bit of a crop farm as well. This base also has its own full tutorial video on my channel as well, so be sure to check that out if you want to build this for yourself. Next up, we have this little build, which is a forest shrine. Maybe you just want to add like a little landmark to a forest or something that you live near, or I mean, for whatever reason, maybe you just want to build to create, and uh, I mean, this does look pretty cool as well and can look creepy at night time. Yeah, so we've got our actual shrine here, which is just made up of like some stone blocks, and then we have our like main kind of area where the guy would read from the book, I guess. And then we have our like worshipping seat as well, and we have some candles that kind of surround this too. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of different river designs, with the first one here being the medieval design. And as you can see, we've just decorated like a pretty plain and standard vanilla river here by adding in a nice little bridge over it. This also leads over to a bit of a campsite here. We've got our actual campfire and a couple of chairs, and then we've got like a little storage pile over here as well. For the next one, we have a Japanese themed river. So for this one, we've added in some campfires underneath the water here to make it look like the river is kind of like steaming, like you'd see that in some like zen gardens and stuff like that. For the bridge, we have one with a Japanese aesthetic, of course, so we've got like acacia wood and stuff. Then on this side, we have a jungle with a bunch of bamboo and stuff around the place, and we also have this nice Japanese well over here too. For the next river design, this term, we have an overgrown theme, so we've just got like a bunch of rocks around the place and some bushes too, and then we have a whole bunch of trees to line the other side. And then for some extra detail, we also have this ruined tower thing as well. And now for the final river design, we have this established kind of medieval theme, I guess. So we've got a nice stone pathway that leads over to this arched bridge design. Something cool about this is that we have like some grates on the sides to let the water pass through. And we've also lined the entire river by using some stone and also some grass as well. Next up, we have this build, which is an ocean garden. Uh, don't judge me as the back of this isn't done because you weren't really intended to see that angle. You meant to just kind of see this angle here. But yeah, I just created this build by using some reference. It was a pretty cool picture that I found on Reddit. It's meant to be like a petrol station, like kind of like the roof thing, and uh, it's as if like the whole area has flooded or something like that. I don't really know what it's meant to mean, but it looks pretty cool to me. Next up, we have four medieval towers of varying conditions or like stages of decay, I guess. So the first one here we have is the pristine variant. So as you can see, it's in tip top shape. We've got a nice intact flag. We've got some contained plants around the place. I mean, it's a little bit wacky, but it's contained nonetheless. Then as we move on, we have the worn variant. So as you can see, the leaves are starting to to kind of grow past where they were initially placed. We've also added some texture with some mossy stone bricks and some andesite and stuff, and we've added some little gaps into the walls as well. Now into the third stage of decay, we have the damaged stage. So as you can see, the flag is just completely gone. The leaves have pretty much overtaken the build at this point, and we've also got a large chunk of damage taken out of the tower here as well. And now for the final one, the ruined stage. As you can see, it's no longer a 
tower. It's a shell of its former self. We've even added a little bit of a story as if some people have kind of moved into this ruined structure and are living here. Next up, we have this ocean cave design. And this idea was actually taken from Sea of Thieves. It was like an update to the game that added like these cool looking cave things. And I just got inspired to create one myself. So we've got some like large rib cage kind of bone things here. It's as if some giant monster or like a whale or something has passed away and its bones are still here and kind of mark the entrance to this lush little cave. Uh, I mean, it doesn't go anywhere, but yeah. So maybe if you have like an underwater base or something like that and you want like a cool entrance, then this is definitely a nice idea for that. Next up, we have this pretty crazy blaze spawner design. As you can see, it's in like a bit of a Japanese kind of style, but in like a nether kind of block palette. So this one over here is meant to be one where you just kind of walk in and you just slay the blazes. I mean, you could probably set it up to be automatic, but we actually have a second variant over here where it is more of like an automatic one. So as you can see, the blazes will spawn. They'll get stuck in this lava and be sent straight down the tunnel Thing that leads down here to where we can actually kill them. All of their items will be automatically sorted into these chests and we can also just easily get the XP from them as well right here. Next up, we have four Japanese ideas with the first one here being a Tori gate. So this Tori gate here is made out of pretty much just acacia wood and also prismarine slabs and stairs at the top and on the sides here. And maybe if you're creating like a Japanese village or something, this would be a really nice entrance kind of design for it. For the next Japanese idea, we have a little mini Zen garden. So as you can see, on this side here, we have our sand section with a bunch of stones as well. And then on the other side, we have our little bamboo forest. And we also have a pathway that kind of connects these with a bridge as well. Onto the next one, we have this Sakura tree that is elevated above this man-made pond. So for the Sakura tree, as you can see, we've used some dark oak wood and used some pink concrete, pink wool, and also some pink concrete powder for the leaves. And now for the final Japanese idea, we just have this nice long bridge here. So we're using acacia wood for the pillars and also the like connecting handrails here and also this little bit down below. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of different interior designs with two of them being more aesthetically pleasing and two being more efficient. So this first one here is our first aesthetic one. As you can see on this side, we've got a nice bookshelf. We've got some hanging plants and lanterns. We've got all of our crafting blocks in this side. And then on the left side, we have some storage and also some furnaces too. For the second aesthetic interior, as you can see, this one's a little bit more storage focused. So we've got more chests around the place and some barrels. We've got our crafting blocks as well. And we also have a nice red stone lamp behind here too. Now onto the more efficient designs that are still pretty aesthetically pleasing. So firstly on the left side here we've got a massive storage wall and then on the right side we have our smelters. And now for the final efficient interior design. We have a very similar one to the previous one. It's just in a bit of a different layout. So as you can see we've got more barrels on this side this time. And then on the right side here we've got our crafting section on the right and then we have our furnaces on the left and they're all divided by this nice armor stand. Next up we have this aesthetic medieval bridge design. So as you can see this one has a predominantly stone theme and it is also elevated up really high from the actual water which is a really nice and easy way to get your bridges looking really cool. So we've got like a multi-layered design here where we've got the handrails then we have like a secondary like underneath kind of section and then we have our leaves here to make it a little bit more vibrant and then all the way down to the bottom we also have this nice little pass through so that you can get to the other side nice and easily. And just as an extra little bonus if you want to watch me build this I have the video for it on my channel so be sure to check that out if you're interested. Next up we have this secret underground storage room. I wanted to quickly apologize. I don't know why it's so laggy in this area, so I'm just going to get through this real quick. Yeah, so we can take the tunnel down here through the water to our underground storage area, and this would definitely be a really nice build to add to your world if you run out of storage in your main base and you want to have like a nice secret section. This build also has its own tutorial video on my channel, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. Next up, we have some large bridge designs with the first one here being a royal theme. This honestly does look a little bit weird, and no one will probably build this, so we're just going to promptly move on. For the next one, we have a ruined theme bridge. So as you can see, we have a giant chunk taken out of the middle here, and it's just completely in shambles. The cool thing about this is it can still be used perfectly as a bridge. You just got to do a little jump between the two sides here. So maybe if you have like a ruined village or something like that, this would definitely be a nice bridge to add to that. For the next bridge design, we have a bit of a drawbridge this time. And so yeah, we've just added like a nice slope to this bridge. It kind of dips down and comes back up. We've also got some hanging lanterns under here as well. And now for the final large 
bridge, we have this Japanese themed one. I've showcased a lot of Japanese stuff in this video. That was not planned. But uh, yeah, as you can see, the roof for this one is pretty crazy and detailed. We've also got a nice bit of elevation to this bridge as well. So it's like in an arched shape and it's very detailed as well. We've got lanterns around the place. We've got fences and fence gates. And yeah, it's, there's a lot going on with this bridge here. Next up, we have this monochrome nether portal design. So for this one, we've hidden all of the obsidian blocks by using some blackstone blocks around the outer rim. And then on the inside, we've used some stone blocks. We've also decorated it by using some covered shroom lights over here. And we've also added in some twisted vines around the place too. And now for this final build, uh, yeah, there's not much going on here, but we just have a detailed cliff design. So if you have a base in the area, this is definitely a really nice way to spruce up your surrounding area. If you're surrounded by cliffs, that is. So here I've just showcased a bunch of ways that you can add some details to your cliffs. So we've added in texture by using stone bricks and also andesite. We've added a bit of an overhang here with some stone stairs and like kind of made the grass protrude out a few blocks more from the cliff. We've added this nice kind of like hollowed out area. We have a bit of a sticking out pillar section here too. And then we've also added a grass little hill on this side as well. All right, first up, we're taking a look at this giant jungle entrance design. So as you can see, we've got this massive wall with a big gap in the center here that allows us to pass through the two uh, theoretically divided areas. As you can see, if I look up a little bit further, uh, yeah, I'm pretty lazy, so it's just kind of cut off. But theoretically, this would just continue on as far as it needs to go and possibly even encase an area or something like that. Now, this build was actually created with one of my good friends, Extra Builds, and it's also based on this reference image right here. And uh, yeah, it's definitely just a really cool, nice way to divide two areas with like this massive kind of brutalist architecture design. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of different mine entrance designs. Uh, also, just ignore all the random crap in the background. Once again, we're on one of my building platforms. But yeah, so for this first one, we have the medieval mine entrance. As you can see, we have like this kind of spruce frame design. This is a pretty common design used on a lot of mine entrances, but I just kind of changed it up a little bit by adding in a bunch of extra details and just some random stuff as well. We also have this minecart station on the outside that will go down theoretically into the mine entrance. Of course, it stops right here. And we've also just added in a couple of extra little details on the inside as well. For the next mine entrance, we have a Japanese style. So as you can see, we've used a frame once again, similar to the medieval one, but this time we're using some acacia wood, which definitely fits the Japanese vibe. We've also added a nice little roof to this one using some prismarine slabs. And yeah, so as you can see, we have our main mine entrance here, which just, of course, heads into the mine. And then over here, we actually have a, well, a theoretical entrance. It doesn't actually work, but yeah, this would go up to the top here and you'd somehow be able to go inside here to like this little storage area. For the next mine entrance, we have one in a dwarven style. And this one's actually inspired by Skyrim and like their kind of dwarven ruin structure thingies. And yeah, so for this one, we have these two pillars on the left and right side. We've got some lava flowing inside of those. We've got some gold blocks as well around the place. And then we also have this massive kind of iron door design. Uh, it doesn't actually like open or work or anything like that. But if you wanted to build this for yourself, I'm sure you could figure out how to get this to uh, work. And for the final mine entrance, we have the overgrown themed one. So this one would be theoretically in the side of a mountain or a cliff or something like that. And uh, yeah, we've just added a bunch of little custom trees kind of overhanging over the entrance and their vines as well have also started covering up the entrance. These might need a, a bit of a trim, forgive me for that. And yeah, overall, it's just a really cool and also pretty easy to build mine entrance as well. Next up, we have this little jungle ruins build. As you can see, we have kind of the ruins of a structure or kind of temple that used to be here. Well, I mean, it's still here. It's just a, a little bit decrepit. Yeah, so we've got like kind of ruins of the pillars here and as if the slabs have kind of fallen onto the floor. We've got a bit of a pathway that goes through this as well and just a couple of little decorations around the place like this little river stream, some candles and some storage blocks as well. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of small bridge designs. For this first one here, we have the natural bridge. So as you can see, we just have like a bit of a natural arch that goes over this. Of course, we've had to add in some wood slabs here just to make the bridge a little bit easier to traverse so you don't have to like spam space bar to get up the grass, you know how it is. For the next bridge, we actually have one that would go into the nether or I mean, you could use it for like a gothic or evil kind of theme village or anything like that. And yeah, this one's pretty simple. So we've got some nether brick walls that I mean, they're supposed to go all the way down to the bottom. I'm not sure why they don't. And then at the top here, we've added in some fences with some leads and these also go down to, I believe, some chickens down here. I don't really want to... Yeah, there we go. Uh, I've kind of ruined it a little bit, but yeah, we've got chickens under here. Man, look what you guys made me do. It's all your fault. But yeah, so the way this works is we have chickens underneath the ground here so that it makes this kind of cool like lead design thing. For the next bridge, we have a medieval style one. So this one's just a nice simple arch design. We've got a little bit of a water pass through here using some iron bars. And we've also textured the underwater area with some mossy stone bricks as well. It's definitely a really nice touch to add to any builds that are situated in water. And now for the final bridge, we have this kind of wacky, weird looking medieval wooden style 
bridge this time. This one's actually roofed as well, as you can obviously see. It's got a bit of a roof here. We've got like some nice little gables on the sides as well. And yeah, just a really cool, compact, and really hyper detailed mini bridge design thing. Next up, we're taking a quick look at two different river designs. So for the first one here, we of course just have a natural river. Well, it's not completely natural. We've of course decorated it heavily by adding in a pathway, a couple of stones, and a bunch of decoration blocks, and also this custom weeping willow tree as well. And then for the second river, we have pretty much the stark opposite. This one is a completely man-made river. So instead of just having grass on the sides, we've instead added in this nice kind of sloped design. We've also made it into like a bit of a dam wall. So as you can see, we have a bridge that goes across here. On the left side, we have a slightly higher water level. And then on the right side, we have the water trickling out down onto the lower level. And yeah, just a different, unique way to make a bridge in your area if you want something a little bit more man-made. All right, for this next one, we have a beach upgrade. And uh, I don't actually have the uh, unupgraded version of this. So I'm just kind of showcasing the area to the right of it. As you can see, this is just like a bog standard vanilla beach. I mean, there's nothing too special going on here, but I've actually upgraded it over here, as you can see. I've showcased a few beach upgrades that I've done before, and this one follows the similar principles of it. So we've got a bit more of a sloped decline into the ocean here, instead of just a like harsh drop off like we have over here, which definitely makes the beaches feel a lot more realistic. We've got like a nice rocky section over here, a bunch of custom palm trees around the place with uh, some theoretical coconuts. I know they're cocoa beans. We've also added in a bit of a pier design over here. And we've also added in a little pathway that snakes around all the way into the tree line over here. And uh, yeah, definitely a really nice build if you're wanting to upgrade an existing beach in your area. Next up, we're taking a quick look at a couple of different aesthetic enchanting areas, meaning they unfortunately don't reach level 30, but you can definitely just add in a bunch more bookshelves in these to get them to level 30. And so for this first one, we're taking a look at the ruined one. So as you can see, it's in like a bit of a forest clearing or something like that. And we have the ruins of what once was like a a tower or kind of structure that was housing this enchanting area. Next up, we have the overgrown enchanting area. This one's definitely really nice and cozy. And once again, you could easily expand this out to reach a full level 30 by adding in more bookshelves around the place. For the next one, we have a cave enchanting area. So this one would obviously just be inside of a cave. Maybe you have like a base down in a cave or something like this, and you could just expand off to the side and add in this nice enchanting area over here. And now for the final enchanting area, we just have a little bit of an interior showcase one. To the left, we have a bit of storage for maybe some lapis, and then we also have some barrels up here for some extra storage, maybe for books and stuff like that. Next up, we're taking a look at four different levels of a mineshaft design. The first one here being the first level, obviously. It's just uh, a simple tunnel, couple of torches, and uh, that's basically it. For the next one, we've got a bit of an upgrade. As you can see, we've added in some arch designs, some pillars, and also this little workstation here with a couple of smelters and some chests as well. For the third level, we've increased the details once again. So this time we've got like a nice pillar system here that actually sticks out out from the walls, we've added in this bracing system and some more stairs for arches and just a bunch more details around the place as well. And now for the fourth and final level of the mineshaft designs, we have uh, this one, which once again has ramped up the details quite a bit. So this time we've got fully decorated pillars. We've got a bunch of arch designs as well around the place. We've gone pretty crazy in the ground by adding in these cracks in the ground. We've got a full mineshaft rail as well. And I just wanted to quickly say when I'm talking about the levels, I'm of course not talking about like really efficiency of the build. I'm talking about the aesthetics. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of weird, wacky tower designs, with the first one here being a nether-themed one. So, as you can see, we just have a whole bunch of nether blocks for the block palette. We've got blackstone, we've got some basalt, and we've got some hanging soul lanterns around the place as well. For the next tower, we have a desert-themed one. Uh, I'm not sure where the door went. There's supposed to be a door here, and uh, also a ladder up to the top. Uh, yeah, just don't worry about that. But yeah, for this one, we've incorporated a whole bunch of jungle wood for like kind of the extra details. I feel like it's definitely the best wood block that kind of suits with the desert theme as well. For the next tower, we have the medieval one. So this one's of course using stone bricks and spruce wood. It's kind of the signature blocks for anything that I make that's medieval. And yeah, this time we also have a door and a ladder that goes up to the very top. And as you can see, we've got a bunch of space up here for you to use to like defend your base or your village or anything like that. And now for the final tower, we have uh, something that's completely different from all of them. This one is a ruined one. And uh, yeah, so it's not very functional, but definitely does look pretty cool and aesthetic. We've used a whole bunch of mossy and cracked blocks for the texture for this build. We've added in some leaves around the place and some logs as well. And then on the inside, we just have a little bit of a workstation with a crafting table and a chest. Next up, we're taking a quick look at four different levels of a medieval farm design with uh, level one here just being a simple circular design. For level two, we've added in a bunch more details. So this time we've got a nice river that kind of flows in between the circle 
circle, we've also changed the shape as well. Instead of it being like a perfect circle, or I don't really know if you can even call that a circle, to be honest. We've changed it to more of like an oval shape and added in a little bit of elevation as well. And some lanterns too. Now for level three, we've once again increased the detail level. We've added in some texture to the surrounding wall design. We've added in some more elevation and we've also added in a composter as well. And now for the fourth and final level, we've added in once again, even more elevation, added some more details to the river, which then of course flows down into a little pond here. We've added in a lily pad and some sugar canes. Uh, this would definitely benefit from maybe some little stones and seagrass in the ground. I'm not sure why I didn't add that. But yeah, we've also added in some wood pillars around the place to support the lanterns instead of just having some stone brick walls. We've added in a couple of extra details like this hay bale stack over here, some storage and a wheelbarrow design too. Next up, we have this hobbit home design. And this build also has a full tutorial video on my channel if you want to build it for yourself. Uh, it's a little bit of an old build, so it's kind of outdated and weird looking. But yeah, so on the exterior here, we have a nice pathway that leads up to the base. We've got a bunch of lamppost designs around the place as well. And then we also have to the right here, a nice little roofed farm section. Now heading on inside of the base, as you can see on the left here, we have our storage, our crafting area, our bedroom with a nice toggleable lamp. Then to the right of this, we have our smelting area and also our enchanting area over here too. All right, and that's it for all 300 plus builds in this video. Be sure to leave a comment with your favorite one and I'll see you in the next video.